Welcome to college football primetime from Sun Life Stadium. It's the ACC on ESPN. Tonight, the hometown Hurricanes are trying to bounce back a week after another road loss. Now Miami's home against Pitt, Pitt Panthers team that has a lot to play for, young and a potential bowl season ahead if they can get a win here. As we say, good evening, everybody. Glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Brock Heward. We'll say hello to Shannon Spake in just a moment. Miami needs to turn things around. They were flat on the road at Virginia last week. Now, they have a potential star in the making at quarterback. They have a legitimate star at running back, and they have five stars that other programs would love to have. Yet, they're just a win over 500. So, how do we really assess Miami, and how does tonight's outcome play into that assessment? Every week matters in college football. We say it all the time, and you've got to finish strong. They also have a two-game losing streak right now. 19 seniors playing their final game, 10 of which are starters. And we spent a lot of time just a week ago talking about their emotional level and would they come to play, and could they match the physical play of Virginia. They did not over four quarters, and that's been the challenge really imposed upon them by their coaching staff this week is to finish this thing. Thing moving in the right direction. How about a little perspective with the high standards that this program has always had? You consider 13 years since their last national title, and 2006 was the last bowl win, and they haven't beaten a team that finished the season ranked since 2010. So Miami's trying to avoid six and six. Meanwhile, it would celebrate it. They're young. They want the bowl. They want the extra practices. It would mean a lot in terms of where the program is headed. You will find coaches that use that young as a crutch. You really will. We'll find it all the time in our meetings. You sit down, well, we're a young team. We're a young team. Pitt can actually say that. They are one of the youngest teams in college football with a sophomore class with two stars that desperately need more work and a group around them that needs more work. So while Miami's trying to hold on to a top 15 recruiting class and send their seniors off strong, this is a Pitt team that desperately needs those 15 bowl practices to continue to move their story, their recruiting pitch in Paul Chris' third year, move that story along as well. The team that needs James Conner, they're running back to yep. be at 100% health. We're going to monitor that. Could be an issue tonight. Meanwhile, they have to stop Miami's Duke Johnson, the pit defense. That's the task tonight. One of the best to ever play for a program that has had some of the best of all time. Duke's run to history, part of our focus tonight. We'll tell you all about it when we return for kickoff next. And college football primetime is brought to you by Marmot High Performance Outdoor Clothing and Equipment. Marmot for life. Miami's Duke Johnson, a part of our storyline tonight as we're back here at Sun Life Stadium. Miami happy to return home. Four of the losses road night games this year. Pitt has lost eight straight to Miami. And Johnson could make history tonight. It's been an amazing year of climbing the Hurricanes all-time rushing list the names he has passed by it reads like a who's who of game-breaking runners I mean from Frank Gore to Willis McGahee week after week he was conquering these heroes of Miami's past Clinton Portis he passed by and then Edron James in week nine and now only one remains Otis Anderson brought I'll tell you the one thing that I have learned playing with many players from the University of Miami in the professional ranks is that word family it, it does matter to them that brotherhood the, the brotherhood the fraternity and I promise you many of those guys are going to be cheering Duke on from wherever they sit tonight and be very proud of the accomplishment and where he sits on that list 34 yards away that's it 34 yards from becoming Miami's all-time rushing leader and you see how he 
stacks up with Otis Anderson. Anderson had 207 more carries. Now Shannon Spake has been by Duke's side many times this year, and she knows that he's given a lot to this team. The question is, how much longer will he be with Miami? Earlier this week, he said, I don't think there's much more I need to prove. Shannon, could this be his last home game? Well, hi, Joe. Duke Johnson stood by those comments when I spoke with him this week, and he told me the two reasons he would return for another season is, number one, to get his degree, which means a lot to both Duke Johnson and his family, and number two, if he feels like he can help this Miami team win their first ACC championship. Now, Todd McShay currently has Duke Johnson projected as the fifth running back in the 2015 draft. And remember this, if this is his last home game here for the University of Miami, Johnson told me he is playing with absolutely no regrets. Because he gives 100% and leaves it all on the field every game and every practice, there's absolutely nothing he would have done differently. Nothing he would do differently, and in my opinion, this needs to be his last game. He has given everything to this program. He's come off of a brutal injury. He's added the weight. He has been selfless on and off the football field. And the lifespan of running backs, especially at the next level, it's been well documented. This should be Duke Johnson's last game. And if this team plays to their capability, he will not only beat that record tonight, he should shatter it. It won the toss. They elected to receive as Justin Vogel kicks away for Miami. And this is Tyler Boyd on the return. And look at Boyd go. As he was taken down by the kicker Vogel all the way out near the 40 yard line. Here's James Connor. Comes in with 1600 yards. That's third in the country in rushing. But the concern was how did he look in pregame? Suffered a hip injury in the second quarter last week against Syracuse. 6'2", 250 pounds, and as you can see there in warm-ups, he's not a guy that uses his quickness or his speed. He uses his raw force and his power, and Paul Chris felt like he'd be willing to go, and it looks like it here on the first snap. Chad Wojtek to pass to open up this game, and he gets a complete to Boyd, who wiggles his way towards the 44-yard line. The impact players are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And you can't feed those two the ball enough tonight. You've already seen the impact with Boyd on that opening kickoff return. He's their most dynamic player. Upwards of 40% of their receptions as a team go his way. And Connor is just a battering ram. And I can promise you there will be collisions tonight with Connor, his big fullback, Parrish, right into Perriman, the middle linebacker, the stud, having an all-conference kind of season. Takes it off right tackle and could not spin free as he was met by Fentress first. And then Gunter also coming in to clean things up against James Conner. And those secondary players, imperative, they tackle well for the Hurricanes. Did not do a great job of that last week. They broke contain. Virginia did many times and finishing on that second and third level. Perriman at 15 tackles. He'll clean up a lot of messes. But with Deion Bush again out with a hamstring, it's Carter, it's Fentress, it's Gunter. They've got to be very secure in their tackling to the big back. Kind of respot that football there. It was off on the mark. And you can see this. Third down. And four. And you can see just the size. That offensive line matches the tailback and matches the fullback. This is a lot of force against the speed and quickness of Miami. Boy took the pass on third and four. And out of the backfield is Connor. And he makes one move and breaks free as Connor gets a good gainer. As Artie Burns had to track him down. But it goes for 39 yards. Jamal Carter missed that tackle in the open field, Brock. And well done here with Kristen's offensive staff. A busted coverage from Miami there, third down, and many times third and medium there. You see pressure, you see man to man. Miami busted their coverage. And Connor shows you, even with the bum hip, yeah, he's willing to make people miss. And Abel there with a the quick step to make Carter swing and miss on the tackle. So first down all the way to the 13-yard line. Here's Connor again. They're feeding the big man, and it pays off. What hip injury. Touchdown hit on the opening drive. And that's a pretty significant touchdown run as well when you talk about the annals of history at Pitt and in the ACC and everything that Connor's done in his career. Single season rushing record now of 23. Tony Dorsett was the name in the record books. And now James Connor. 
Makes pit history here on this opening drive. As Chris Blewett just sneaks it in the right upright. He owns the single season touchdown record of 23 rushing touchdowns now. Think of all the greats at Pitt. He set them up coming out of the backfield. And then he would cash it in. 13 yard touchdown run to start things here in South Florida. The 250 pound sophomore back, James Connor, walking off the pain he's dealing with with that hip injury, but he was such a big force on that opening drive. I think you're going to see him do that all night long. That is a painful injury, a helmet right on the hip. Very little practice this week. Basically, just the walkthroughs, the mental reps, and he's going to have to really battle through because this team's going to lean on him heavy. And based on Miami's willingness or unwillingness and want to to tackle, you're going to give it to 24 a ton. Chris Blewett kicking off for Pitt. And Stacey Coley will take a knee. We mentioned Tony Dorsett, that rushing record for touchdown runs just top. Of course, one of the greats of all time. Three time, first team All America, the Heisman Trophy winner in 76 and a college football Hall of Famer put forth in 1994. He has the total touchdown record in a season but James Conner just topped him now with 23 rushing touchdowns in a season for Pitt. And the beauty of the ultimate team game in that position in particular there's not just one way to do it. Tony Dorsett so graceful so smooth and explosive Conner such a powerful force of 250 pounds. But equally dominant. And here's Duke Johnson trying to make history of his own comes in tonight needing just 34 yards to become Miami's all time leading rusher. And he does it a little bit more like Dorsett where he'll put that foot in the ground and the explosiveness and the ability to get to that top end speed in a hurry. He's added the 15 pounds from a season ago off of that bad leg injury lower leg injury and those 200 pounds have provided and proved to be much more durable and dependable down the stretch of this season. Freshman quarterback Brad Kaya here on second and seven as the rush was right in his face. It was actually blocked into him that time as Anthony Gonzalez came in. Arm was hit 
as he was making a pass in motion, incomplete pass. Riley Johnson is our ACC referee this evening. You can see the explosive home run hitting capabilities of this passing game, leading the ACC with 23 touchdowns. I also like the fact he leads the ACC in pass efficiency. They've relied on that run the second half of the season a lot more, and it's made Kaya a more efficient passer. Third down and seven. Kaya over the middle, and he gets it complete to Malcolm Lewis for a Miami first down. 20 yard reception to Lewis. And he does it with the cadence first. He knows he has that free play. He could feel Pitt jump off sides there and then the vertical route. And, and really, there's not a throw that Kaya cannot make. And big reason why he won this job as a true freshman, he can dish it out all over the field. And it's also a big component. Lots of check with me, run checks, big volume, big playbook that Kaya is able to handle. Here's Duke. As he finds his way just cross midfield. Look, offensively tonight, Miami has to know. I think both Duke Johnson and Brad Kaya that they're going to have to score some points. If anybody's going to mix it up, as we've seen Miami a bunch this year, it typically is that offensive line. Feliciano there. With 56 Moody starting the place of render. Gain of about two that time as Matt Galambos made the tackle, Duke Johnson. I referenced earlier the second half of the season, and you can see the third down struggles, but 63% run as this team found some of its identity. And really encourage some of the fan base and the people around the program turning their season around at three and three before these final two losses. The run's been a big part of that. Duke Johnson splits out wide here on third and four. And once again, they convert as Stacy Coley gets the reception that'll move the chains. That went for seven yards. And Co Coley needs to be a little bit of a difference maker. It was against this pit team that he had one of his better games last year. In fact, three touchdowns that he scored, but he's been a real non factor this season. And that's on Lafayette Pitts, the best defender in that secondary for Pitt, just giving up too much cushion on third and short. High formation with Gus Edwards now as the running back. And he finds a nice hole and powers his way inside the 30 yard line. That was a 12 yard run. From Gus Edwards, the sophomore from Staten Island who came south to play for the Canes. And what have you seen in all three runs now? The first couple there with Duke Johnson and with Gus as well. A real emphasis early to run this between the tackles. They want those body blows. They want this beat up defense from Pitt to feel it from the inside out. And then they'll run their stretch. Then they will get to their perimeter run. But a real focal point to run it between the tackles first. And that's right where they go back to. And this time Edwards was stacked up before he was able to spin for maybe a yard and a half as Mosley Smith made the tackle. Pitt without Daryl Render starting defensive tackle tonight out with an injury. And there's a look at his buddy next to him, KK Mosley Smith. There is Justin Moody filling in for Render. You're also without your big D tackle, Tyreek Jarrett, 340 pound plugger. He will be out tonight. So this is a thin group in their front four. Direct snap to Duke Johnson. He was met at the 21 yard line. So it'll be third and short. Anthony Gonzalez with another tackle. A bowl has come to an end and Ole Miss defeats Mississippi State so they will tumble in the college football playoff rankings. And all that energy spent about well, what happens if Mississippi hey, State right? it cleans itself up. We, ne it? we never learn from history. It happens every single year. All the energy and time we spend and just let it sort itself out late in November and typically it works itself out on its own. Third down and three now. Can Johnson pick it up? Good job of that pit front to surge into the backfield. And Matt Galambos came up with a tackle as David Durham was quick to get there as well. That's exactly right. That surge. And boy, that is a bad sign for Miami. You want to talk about a beat, beat up offensive team or position group. That offensive line has very little substitutes. Feliciano 
already playing with a banged up hand. Feliciano, he played with that broken bone in his hand last week. He's moved around a bit to help them out with some injuries. And senior starting guard who they cannot afford to go down. They're already patchworking this offensive line as it is. They lost two right tackles earlier this year. Yeah, that was Gadbois and then Shane McDermott's little brother Casey, huge recruit, couple guys that they would have loved to have had here, some of that depth down the stretch this season. And this is big nasty. This is the guy, one of those 19 seniors playing his final game, 43 career starts. And that's a good sign as he's able on his own to get off the field. So Michael Badgley will come on. So he's 9 of 12 on the year. It's a 40 yard attempt. At that front leaning form they tries to drive the ball into. And Badgley puts it through. So both teams able to get on the board early on here. ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Buick. Five expectation sharing models, another reason to experience the new Buick. And Jiffy Lube, leave worry behind and stop by Jiffy Lube today for a signature service oil change. Here's what we're thankful for, all of us up here in the booth. This crew, the J crew, and all the work they've put in all year long but especially being away from family here during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. There's the J crew. Great job this year guys. And look at that crew of 35. One of my favorites Bill down there at the end just does a fantastic job. As is everybody just <laughs> sacrificing and giving to one another. All the hard work that goes in. Miami with the field goal here as Vogel kicks away and Boyd will get another shot here had a good return to start the game. And this time he is met. That was Corn Elder playing great kickoff coverage. Well that's a whole lot different effort than what we saw in the touchdown run from James Conner. Excellent cut yes but take a look at Artie Burns the sophomore cornerback here. He is unblocked. He is seeing the entire play in front of him. That, that. That's effort you cannot have. Not after a two game losing streak. And everything we talked about with just that want to and matching that emotional level, that secondary and that group on the back end has to be willing to tackle a big back.
Corners love to cover. They love to make plays. They love interceptions, but you got to do the dirty work as well, especially against a blue-collar team like the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, because this is going to be coming at you all night long. James Conner again. Dealing with that hip injury, but going full throttle each and every time. And he's going to be dealing with that all evening long. That's not something that gets loose and feels better. It's really a pain tolerance. And he's just nifty enough. And, and what I love when you study him on tape is he does not lose speed. At 250 pounds, he is not a blazer. He's not going to run by people. But those little subtle cuts, just like we saw in that touchdown run, that's yeah, enough to get to that second level. And Artie Burns willing at least that time to push Connor out of bounds. Isaac Bennett now comes in here after that big run. Tie back. James Connor. Pittsburgh, first charge to this half. So Pitt uses their first timeout after that 19 yard run by James Connor. Town team here is on the road. Dolphins and Jets on Monday Night Football. Monday at 8:15 on ESPN. No other night is Monday night. Dolphins at six and five, trying to work their way into playoff position. They have uh, struggled with some close games this year. Jets may just be the remedy for that. Brock. <laughs> Isaac Bennett in for James Conner at running back for Pitt. Chad Wojtek is going to run it. He can do this well. A stiff arm and maintains his balance and picked up a block. Let's go down to Shannon. Well, Joe, James Conner certainly playing with some discomfort, as you mentioned. I've seen him on the sideline. He's been favoring that right hip, stretching it out. He spent some time on the stationary bike. He does have some extra padding on that right side. The athletic trainer told me while he didn't practice this week, it was all about pain management, inflammation management, and, and range of motion. Coming into the game, the pain level was at a four, according to the athletic trainer. 35 yards rushing, a touchdown, 40 yards receiving already but for now it's Bennett getting work and Bennett slips through that first wave and is able to push his way to the 46 yard line met by Weish and Fentress there and for now it's basically every run a pit getting to that second level and, and that's what's so critical with what Miami likes to do their defensive linemen are not guys that typically get you a lot of tackles or tackle for loss but many times within their scheme they have got to be stout they've got to close those windows down a good job here in the first quarter in any phase defensively for Miami. So Connor comes back in now in second and four. He 
and go right back to him. And he puts down the shoulder, gets some pad leverage, and picks up the first down. Took a helmet right on the hip from Syracuse a week ago that slowed him down, really kept him out of action in the second half, and that was after the touchdown run. And he's going to be feeling it, but nothing like touchdowns and adrenaline to make you feel a little bit better. Absolutely. 23 touchdowns this year, the ACC record, the school record. He's right alongside Tony Dorsett now in the record book at Pitt. Boy, took three step and he was just buried that time on a safety blitz by Jamal Carter. As the flag is down right at the 45 yard line. So let's see if they clean this up. And that's a face mask against Miami. Yeah, and that and looked I think like Carter, when he came over the top, he was looking for something to grab onto because he came flying over the top of Boyd. Personal foul, tackle your quarterback with a helmet opening, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Mark D'Onofrio, the defensive coordinator for Miami, he can see exactly what we're seeing up here from our booth, and that is the fact that. Hey, these guys are getting on our safeties and getting on our corners. So how do you stop that? Well, you try to now send some of those run blitzes. It's exactly what they do. Carter gets home but gets a 15. This is Chris James. Who can only manage a couple of yards that time is Anthony Chicolo, one of the seniors being honored here tonight at Miami makes the tackle there. That face mask moments ago, as you see, Wojtek's head was twisted when Carter came in. And you love the one in so high that he was looking yep. for something to hold on to there, Brian. You love the effort and you love the want to there. I mean, that, that's some of what you've got to feel from an energy standpoint. Just got to try to avoid the headgear as best as you can. Rashid Ibrahim now at running back for Pitt as it's a quarterback run, and Wojtek, boy, can he go! A real strong, good athlete at quarterback for Pitt. He is their second leading rusher on the team. 13 yard game there. We were down, all of us on the field pregame, and he is powerfully built. He was a kid coming out of high school. You're talking about a weight room kid, over a thousand pounds when it came to squat, clean, and bench press. And he's every bit at 200 plus pounds, enjoys that weight room, very strong and very willing, like the rest of these guys offensively. To get right in your mouth, play smash mouth football, football with you in the second leading rusher for this team. There's two 100 yard running games for Pitt this year. Connor, straight up the middle. As that offensive line tries to give one more push. We saw Arkansas a couple times this year. And, and they love to say that they are the biggest offensive line in all of football and they are they are enormous with the hogs and really turn it around and Connor is continuing to really favor that hip. But this pit crew is not far behind. I mean this is a really big physical group that I think you can see in their run game. There's not a lot of window dressing. They're going to come right at you. Second and six they can get a first down down at the one yard line. Boy tech again. As the whistles came in. Ball start, number 86. Offense, five yard penalty, still second down. He's a tight end, Holtz, who moved there. Quarterback Chad Voite. Now facing a second and 11. Has plenty of time and gets it complete as Boyd stretches out. And they said he crossed. They're going to say that's a touchdown. Meanwhile, Miami's returning what they thought was a live ball as Kirby will be disappointed to know otherwise. But it is going to go down as a 12 yard touchdown reception. As Tyler Boyd stretched out. 
Wojcik does a really nice job of being patient within the pocket, and so does Boyd. And that's going to be six. And no, no doubt that's not a fumble. Let's see if there's any part of that knee that's down. That is a great athletic effort by Tyler Boyd to stretch out there. And you break Larry Fitzgerald's records at this university, which he's done with back to back thousand yard seasons to begin Rolling his career. The field is a touchdown. That play is under further review. Jason Garska is the replay judge. We'll look through this effort from Tyler Boyd. Ruling on the field a touchdown. And he crossed that plane. As we welcome those of you who just watched Baylor hold on against Texas Tech. This is Pitts Tyler Boyd stretching out and scoring against Miami. Pitts offense off to a very good start here against the Canes on a night when they are trying to claim bowl eligibility. And Boyd is so smooth, so graceful, fun to watch all the different ways that Pitt and Paul Christ utilize him. He'll play in the slot, he'll play outside. You'll see him in kickoff return, and these are synced together here. And let's see if. Well, that's that's awfully close, Joe. Well, the reason that we sync it is because you want to watch the knee on the right side, but then the left side is showing you the goal line angle. And all it takes is for any part of that ball to touch any part of that white. And the call on the field also critically important because it has to then be indisputable if there's any space between the two. You know that's a great point to, to reiterate Brock because you can't judge in a case like this. It has to be without a doubt that you see the indisputable evidence that demands you declare it one way or the other to overturn this. And a word you don't hear a lot when it comes to receivers and running backs is patience. But you have to watch Boyd on the outside. Just allow this zone coverage in the people on the inside. After review, the ruling of the field stands. Touchdown. And I think that's the right call. But the ability to allow the play to develop in front of you. It's so many times young receivers say, no, they're going to get the ball, and they're going to run right to the route, and they're going to mess up all the timing and the spacing. Tremendous patience and poise from both quarterback and wide receiver to deliver. And back-to-back -back touchdowns for the Panthers to start. Chris Blewett puts it through and hits up by 11 in the first quarter. Boyd's touchdown makes it 14 to 13. As Brock mentioned right there alongside Larry Fitzgerald when it comes to the all timers and receivers in Pitt went over a thousand yards receiving for the second straight year Fitzgerald the only other one to do that as Stacy Coley will take it from the goal line and he doesn't even make it out to the 15 Pitt Miami on a big night in college football.
The Iron Bowl is kicking off right now on ESPN. We invite you to enjoy the whole evening with us here in South Florida. The Iron Bowl, Brent and Jesse have the call on ESPN. Paul Feinbaum with a simulcast of all those antics going on in the SEC network as well. Almost intercepted that time by Todd Thomas. Should have been intercepted and Kaya once again on the ground was on the ground 16 times last week as Virginia owned the line of scrimmage. And you see there again a little bit of pressure and inside loop there from Soto gets right in the face of Kaya. And that's a no no. That was the first half of the season for Brad Kaya. Some of those decisions and mistakes cleaned it up in the second half, but he got away with one there. Duke Johnson now. Remember, he's trying to make history tonight, but that's a tackle for loss by Matt Galambos. As a young man, it's overcome so much in life. A mother who struggled with drugs and alcohol addiction. His older brother, John, ended up playing the role of a caretaker. John himself struggling with an eye condition that left him legally blind. And that's brother sits and listens to the game on the radio each and every broadcast and looks forward to that moment when Matt's name is announced. Third down and ten now. Kaya here on third and ten throws it underneath to Clive Walford who's had an outstanding year but they're going to be punting away as that only went for six Gonzalez was covering and made the tackle Joe this is a really dangerous start for the University of Miami and, and I think very clearly they lost to Florida State twice that emotionally they did not get back up for Virginia last week and now you're looking at the first quarter of play where Pitt has done anything that they have wanted to do offensively and forced a couple of these already. Vogel with a line drive that takes a big Miami bounce. Well, Allstate is celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands field goal nets. They make contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And since 05, they've contributed more than $3.7 million in those scholarship funds. So who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the ringleader to say enough's enough here? Is it going to be Perriman in the middle, the middle linebacker, our impact player with 15 tackles last week? Because right now, Voitek and Pitt run, pass, play, pass, movement. Really, the full arsenal has not been contained or stopped in any way by the Hurricanes. A motion perish now. And they run behind him to the outside, but coming up and making the play was Fentress. Shannon. Well, this Pittsburgh offense is certainly giving this Miami defense some different looks. A little bit of confusion down here on the on the sideline. Defensive line coach had one message for his guys, though. We have to keep him in the pocket. Obviously talking about Chad Wojtek, who's been so mobile tonight. Wojtek has 23 yards rushing on those two carries. Very, very capable mobile quarterback for Pitt. So after the tackle for loss, second and 14. And he sprints to the near side, looking over his options, and he throws it away. So it will be third and 14 as the pressure came from Raphael Kirby that time. Smart decision. Nothing there. You've got a 14-3 lead. And Wojtek has really grown. His tape early in the season at times was tough to watch. The inability to see the entire field. A lot of missed opportunities. Maybe no tougher loss than Akron for this team early this season. But Wojtek, like the rest offensively, have really come together. He's protected the football so much better. And as you've seen with the execution in this first quarter, has really developed alongside that experience. Pressure off the edge. As the whistles blow again. Ball start. Offense. Number 69. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's the left tackle. Biznawadi missed last week's game against Syracuse. Battled some back and ankle injuries. It was Carter who was coming in showing. Blitz again. And, it was and I like Wadi who was thinking about it a bit. I like that, Joe. If you're a defensive staff and you don't love to blitz anyway, you've looked at the way your team has played. You can force that issue, try to force some of that energy by being more aggressive in your calls. 
Third and 19 now as they bring four against Voitek. And he throws and checks down underneath to Isaac Bennett. And Bennett almost made an inside move that earned him that line there. But he's going to come up about two and a half yards short as Jermaine Grace finally got to him. As the final moments will count down here in this first quarter. You can see there with the quarterback, the gauze in the nose. It's going to be... A physical affair in South Florida, I promise you that. Don't go anywhere. Nice to be in South Florida, especially this time of the year. It's a little better than it's been for Pitt. You know, winless in the last 10 road games at Miami. 0-9-1 in those games. Last win down here was 1963. It's Ryan Winslow, the Philly kid who was a good high school basketball player at LaSalle College Prep. Punts away for the Panthers. Fair catch at the 20. Earlier tonight, Miami honoring the seniors who have put in some great work. Clive Walford and the rest meeting up with Al Golden. Perryman's had a heck of a career. He'll be in the record books as a top 10 tackler. And how about Anthony Ciccolo and Dad <laughs> saying, Atta boy, third generation Kane is Anthony Ciccolo. Granddad and father played here. 45 consecutive starts. A lot of these seniors, a lot of sweat equity. That's why you do not want to go out. On a night, you don't want to go out on a season with a three game losing streak. And you got to be more disciplined than that. Daniel Isadora went early. 
Ball start, number 74, five yard penalty, still first down. the big left tackle Eric Flowers now he is a junior alongside Duke Johnson both guys that have some draftable grades Flowers who played really well against Florida State a couple weeks ago you're absolutely right Joe it's got to be smarter than that Duke Johnson flanking Brad Kaya play action now Kaya is going to hit that tight end on a seam Clive Walford as Walford fights his way towards midfield, a 32-yard reception for the senior tight end, a finalist for the Mackey Award. You could see Kai at the line of scrimmage changing some of those calls. That's a run pass look, a little play pass to get those linebackers' eyes up into the backfield. And Big Clive, the leading receiver, bringing it down. And that's not a great sign as he's favoring that left hand coming off the field. Such a big part of their offense. Standish Dobart comes in to play tight end. That snap was low, and Kaya just falls on it back near the 40-yard line. Joe, just look at some of the body language of guys. Hands on hips, hands up in the air. That ball was snapped before Kaya was ever ready for it. Lots of that check with me. Even on that last play, some check with me. Kaya's coming up to the line to make a call, and McDermott making his 34th consecutive start. Also a redshirt senior, and the quarterback just not on the same page. And McDermott's a guy that you think of as being steady and reliable. A miscommunication there and a loss of six. And Kaya connects with Stacy Coley. Eight yard reception to Coley. He's a dynamic playmaker, but perhaps a bit underutilized this year. Look at those numbers for Clive Walford. Tops all the tight ends to ever play at Miami in career yards. 14 career touchdowns and seven catches last week against Virginia showed his tremendous effort on a night where things were flat at times. Third and eight for the freshman quarterback Kaya. And he picks it up with ease to Philip Dorsett who can flat out go. Goodbye. Hello end zone. Chatting with James Coley, offensive coordinator on the field before the game. And on third down, and especially in that down and distance, Pitt loves to bring pressure. And this was their answer. They worked on this all week. You remember Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin, they call that a bang eight, just a little, not a slant, not a post, right in between, right where those linebackers had blitzed and vacated, and get that guy the ball in space. Mm. Touchdowns tend to follow. So Miami cuts into Pitt's lead. And they do so with Philip Dorsett, who adds another big play to his resume. Nine touchdowns now on the year. It's a guy that was tied to one point at a 4 2 1. Boy, was he blazing past those Pitt Panthers.
Hey, you want the best news and analysis on your NFL Sunday? It's ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. Starts at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Also available on Watch ESPN. You have a Seahawk free NFL. Oh, Sunday no, you never do. Go Falcons. Go, <laughs> Go beat the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> Go Falcons. <laughs> you get those Seahawks back to one game behind Arizona. Justin Vogel will be kicking away to the dangerous Tyler Boyd. And he fields it at the six. And Boyd tries to cross field, then cuts back and does well to get out towards the 30 yard line. Let's go to the studio and Chris Cotter. Tess Brock, time for a Dr. Pepper conference update. The Iron Bowl. Auburn turned the ball over on their first play from scrimmage. TJ Yeldon makes him pay. Alabama breaks out on top, 7 to nothing. This game over on ESPN earlier in the day in the Egg Bowl. Ole Miss beat Mississippi State, so that number four spot in the rankings up for grabs. Tess, Brock? And Jalen Walton had a 91-yard run for Ole Miss when that game had tightened up to 17 to 10. That was really the swing point for the Rebels. As Chris James takes it ahead. So today was a big day when it comes to the college football playoff and what the selection committee to you you cross off teams left oh, and right I, I really enjoy every doing week it's maybe what I enjoy doing <laughs> as, as, anything. as we've said hey let the regular season take its course and this gets cleaned up yep TCU is in prime yes, position now aren't they you know Baylor really struggled to hold on against Texas Tech this week's rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-a second and four Chris James and a good second effort that time to push ahead and see where that mark comes in. Remember that yellow line is unofficial just a little TV toy for your enjoyment and it is a first down. We've seen this two or three times that initial contact and then the surge beyond it and that's that want to. I mean that's a defensive group there and, and Perryman and his safeties and that defensive line saying hey. You know what's coming. This is counter. This is ISO. You know what is in this run game. And when you stop that initial surge, it's incumbent upon you to get more guys to the football to push that ball backwards. We just loaded backfield as they doubled up that I formation. And Chris James was able to get it out to the 46 yard line. Six yard gain. And this is what Pitt wants to do. And James. We talk about a young team. He is a super freshman. You got the super softs and Boyd and Connor. But these are some young kids playing some prominent roles down the stretch. You know, he came out of Notre Dame prep in the Chicago area, Brock. So all the Big Ten teams were in on him. But he made a decision to come and play ACC ball at Pitt. And you know what's really improved with him? His patience as well. Seven and four now. They ran the jet motion, but it didn't free up much for James that time as Hurtaloo made the tackle. And you can see Hurtaloo there, and that's important for Miami in that defensive group. This, these defensive linemen, when you get all that power and you get those guards pulling, you have got to hold the point of attack and then have the ability to get off those blocks and make some tackles. Bennett on third and two followed his fullback and it worked out just right. Big gain by Isaac Bennett a nice job by Jamar Parrish a 14 yard run for Pitt. You like big guys in the backfield. I do. Right? I do. I like lead blockers Brock. Uh, this is Parrish. This is 270 pounds and the ball typically follows where he goes. And his job pretty easy there when I talk about getting off of blocks no one does not until he's able to target and find a safety at the final level of that defense that's that, that showed should, him the light that should not happen <laughs> yes, took him did. down the tunnel went to the second level now too tight split single back Bennett again but this time tripped up by Denzel Perryman who last week against Virginia was everywhere had a career high 15 tackles moved into the top 10 of the all time leading career tackle list here at Miami. He's pushing 340 career tackles in fact and 
Yeah, on a defense that struggled, especially in the second half of that game with some short fields, he was the one guy that did step up time and again with plays like that. His ability to diagnose and then when he sees it, bam, he's going to hit it coming downhill. Second and 11. Wojtek is joined by Ibrahim in the backfield. As they go trips left here on second and 11. High snap. Inside handoff. And as Ibrahim is met by Perriman. And then here comes the rest of the offensive line to gain some extra. Some extra? Yeah. That's four yards of extra. 13 yard run in total, and they got the first down because of that you, effort. You're going to see McCord try to come back on the backside of that. Two missed tackles. And then actually at the 32 yard line, initial contacts made is that Miami's trying to rip and tear at the ball. Five extra yards here. Perryman going for the strip instead of bringing him to the ground, and it cost them. And now James Connor straight up the middle. What a nice move by Connor as the leg drive continues as he gets down to about the 12 yard line a 14 yard gain. They're just ripping him off now against this Canes defense. And he is just gutting it out. He's got a bigger pad that's come on. I mean this is all about just the fight and the want to. And does it matter. Do you think a bowl game matters to these kids as Pitt's sitting at five and six and needs this game to extend into a second season. What a beautiful once again subtle cut from a big man moving the chains Chris James back in here And they run the lead again with James but this time only goes for three as Perriman with another tackle and The rest of his teammates feel it You want to talk about energy, you know when a guy is suffering and when a guy is hurting and already a nine play drive once again for Pitt And they know exactly what James is going through and what he's endured to even get to this point to get on that field and to fight through every single time he's on the field to fight through the pain. That's leadership. Second and seven. This is going to be the first pass of this nine play drive to the end zone. Did he scoop that up? No, incomplete as Boyd made an effort to go low. Looked like Horn Elder, the defensive back for Miami, maybe was able to get his hand in there and push the ball down against the ground before it was fully secured by Tyler Boyd. And once again, they will move him around, so right in the middle of that formation now. Third and seven with Wojtek out of the gun. Pressure up the middle. They pick it up. He's going to the corner and it's overthrown. He was looking for Boyd and the flag comes in as there was contact as Boyd was trying to release to that corner. And he's really good at this as well. This shows up on tape all over the place. Not only the leading receiver, but he draws a lot of these penalties. He can feel that initial contact. And that's going to look like it's going to be Jamal Carter again. That's why you move a receiver around, get him off the corners, put him on a safety, a face mask earlier, and what looks like a holding or pass interference here on Carter, who's filling in for the injured Dion Bush. Pass interference, number six. Since the foul occurred in the end zone, the ball will be spotted at the two yard line. Automatic first down. At times, you got to be a little bit of an actor here as well. And, and yes, there is an immense amount of contact there, and it's impeding the route. But you know what? Boyd does a good job of showing those referees and the back judge and the side judge exactly that. And that's not the first time that's happened. Many big plays for Pitt have come from Boyd on trying some of those critical penalties as well. If James Conner scores here, he's going to break Tony Dorsett's total touchdown record in a season in Pitt history. Up and over and in. James Conner now. 24 touchdowns on the year. Dorsett moves to second place in total touchdowns in a season in Pitt history. Well, clearly he's gone through, and this time he goes up and over that pile. Gutsy stuff from the lightly recruited 250 pound sophomore. 
Second touchdown tonight. What a drive that was. Just muscling their way down. 11 plays capped by Connor. ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Ultra HD from Vizio. Nothing is more captivating. And Jared, the gallery of jewelry. Truly unique designs that you won't find just anywhere. That's why he went to Jared. You don't need a player or a video guy up on the scissors or the crane at Miami. They go with the drone footage of their offense. They like that high end zone. How about high drone behind the offense at Miami's? Sports Center app will show you all the video of the touchdowns scored by Pitt. The most recent coming from James Conner, his second. So the video now posted on the Sports Center app. That's a great app to get up to speed with everything that's going on throughout the day of college football. I've seen that hand signal before as well. You know what that is? Feed me. Continue to feed me the ball. 20 of the 26 plays have been just that for Pitt here. Running Stacey the football. Foley. May have gotten to the 20. Miami needs a spark here at home, trailing by 11. Maybe Duke can provide it.
Tuesday at 7.30 on ESPN. It's the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Syracuse and Michigan will get things going. And then number 16, Ohio State and Louisville in a good one. ACC Big Ten Challenge Tuesday on ESPN. Ohio State football. They got the win against Michigan, but JT Barrett lost with a broken ankle. Brad Kaya completes this pass to get things going to Dobar, the tight end who came in to replace Clive Walford earlier. That goes for a 24-yard reception. It's pretty obvious there's some opportunities. We've talked about the second level on the other side and how much Pitt's been able to run it and get to that second level. Miami with their play action pass and as much as Pitt has to commit to stopping this run you have seen ample opportunities in the passing game off of that play pass. Duke Johnson. He was able to leap ahead. Tackled by Anthony Gonzalez. That's five more yards for Duke Johnson who has been struggling to get going here early on 17 yards. He needs 17 more to become Miami's all time leading rusher. And you saw Dorsett with the explosive play once he got the ball and just a little green grass around him. I'm going to guess here it's not going to take long. Lots of running between the tackles, but eventually you're going to get out on the perimeter with your run game and with Duke in particular. Seal this edge, seal this edge and give him the opportunity to the field. Instead, he couldn't find much room as Todd Thomas came in and filled that hole. Pretty significant third down as well as Pitt has been able to control the game and possess it offensively. If you're Miami here, you really can't afford to punt it and give it right back to him. Same down and distance. A blitz look here. Let's see if Pitt will finally back out. And yes, they do. Third and five. Kaya. That is right at the line to make to Walford. And that will be a first down for Miami as Walford was covered by Galambos. Such a weapon and such an advantage when you've got a big body tight end that's capable of giving you. It's like that entry pass in basketball when you've got that post player. And big Clive has done such a wonderful job and he possesses it looks like all the way through the contact with the ground. He's done a really nice job utilizing that 6'5, 250 pound frame and some real trust developed as Clive, the redshirt senior, the leading receiver for Miami. Three catches tonight. For Walford leads the team in catches. He's the kind of guy, you know, they call like he's a first down or touchdown maker. Always that target in a tough spot. He's got it by yep. about two football lengths. And there. he's he's the kind of guy that's going to play at the next level because the NFL loves guys like that. Mismatches. You want to put a linebacker on him just like that, just as you saw the middle linebacker, he can't cover him. You want to put a safety on him? Well, that's fine. He composed him up. And back to back 100 yard games has shown the ability to stretch the field as well. And much like many of those NFL tight ends that you refer to, he was first a basketball star. He didn't come to football until his junior year of high school. Gus Edwards now getting some work. And he fits right into that little crease to the 41 yard line. Folks are mixing it up. You know who's going to be right in the middle of it. That's going to be Feliciano. We've seen now Miami a number of times this season in Big John and 6'5, 320 pounds. I told you earlier, 43 career starts here for Miami. Not afraid to push and shove a little bit. Play action. Kaya. Downfield he goes looking for Dorset. And Dorset had a good shot at it, but Pitts was with him stride for stride. He sure was and what looked like really good timing. You can see Kaya, he was chasing it down. He thought he had six there, but really good timing from Pitts. Dorsett beats him clean, but pretty good closing speed. And then watch the timing to get his hand in there at the very last second. And disrupt. You'd like to see Dorsett try to shield just a little bit and create some space there, but Pitts 
by far the best cover corner of the redshirt junior with the pass breakup. So receivers are split two by two here on third and five. And a crossing route is Walford. We talk I use the word you know he's a reliable target he's that guy that you looked at that's the kind of spot there a third and five as he gets seven more yards. And that was actually I think a blown assignment there you had two guys in the same spot Pitt still can't stop big Clive. As he's now run that little short out that little stick route they call it a six yard out route and Pitt defenders having. A hard time trying to stop that whether it was safety or nickelback or linebacker as well. They run power and he takes it to the other side as Duke Johnson was tackled by Maddox the freshman. And Duke went against the grain that time. I think he's getting tired of all that contact between the tackles and not finding much space. And there's some of that vision there to cut it back and that's a really good tackle from a 160 pound true freshman in Avante Maddox who's been thrust into the starting lineup over the last four games. That's one that I bet Duke wishes he had back and typically a tackle especially against an undersized corner that he wins. 11 yards away from owning that record here with the Canes. Here's the pitch. And Todd Thomas. Made the tackle of Duke Johnson that time. So it'll be third and short for Miami. Under three minutes to play here in this first half. Clive Walford is still down at the end of that play. As you see the medical staff looking at his right leg. Take a short break as Walford. Is able to get up. Miami in the midst of this nine play drive but their start to end with five Wolford just came off the field. It doesn't really look like there's any contact there. Any knee to knee but they're absolutely. Evaluating that and. Significant player and he's been a difference maker in this first half they need him on the field. Flat comes in on third and two as there was some movement. Ball start, number 74, five yard penalty, third down. See the head shaking by Eric Flowers and the frustration of Al Golden. Look at that rank when it comes to penalties per game and the yards. On 
Dante accrue there. Al doesn't like it, but I think that was pretty obvious with Eric there trying to get a head start on the run. So now it becomes third and seven. And that puts Kaya in position to throw where it is deflected. And Todd Thomas being very, very active there as it goes from third and two in a more manageable situation to an incompletion on third and seven. Thomas, the leading tackler, also leads his team in tackles for loss, redshirt senior. And you can see it. He is just locked in in zone coverage. He is reading the eyes of Kaya. He puts two paws on that. He could have very easily had an interception. Instead, forces a field goal. So now the live leg of Michael Badgley on to attempt a 48 yarder. And Badgley is able to sneak it through. So Miami gets something out of it. They cut the margin to eight. A career long for Badgley. Let's go to the studio and Chris. All right, test coming up on the Outback Halftime Show. Chris Cotter will be joined by Robert Smith and also Brett McMurphy. Florida State, hey, you know what? They had a really tough one in the first half. Jameis Winston still struggling, but they were able to survive. Mississippi State did not. We'll talk about the Egg Bowl that Ole Miss won, now sending a little bit of chaos into the whole playoff picture. And also Ohio State struggling with their win, and they also lost the Heisman Trophy candidate. It's all coming up Outback Halftime. I feel like each and every week we see that headline of Seminoles survive, pull it out, did it again today. Florida settling for all those field goals. Speaking of field goals, here's Badgley. This was moments ago. And what, he put it through from 48. And what's his strength as a kicker, Joe? Well, he's a guy who really zeroes in on a pinpoint spot and tries to drive it forward. I mentioned earlier he's got that front wing. He's got that exaggerated kind of stance where he's got a pre-jab step, I would say, Brock. That left foot goes forward, body comes forward with it, with that chest lane. I've said it once. I know you like breaking down the I've said it once. I've said it a hundred times. <laughs> Nobody breaks kickers down better than Joe Tessitore. And this is Boyd from the goal line. Has one little stutter move and then rolls his way out to the 22-yard line. Trusted target is brought to you by Jiffy Lou. Sure nice to have a reliable 250 pound weapon and Connor's not done a lot of that just fourth reception of the season but he has done plenty of scoring touchdowns nobody better in the history of pit football and that's even Tony Dorsett nobody better in the ACC in fact of getting across the goal line and Connor telling you continue to feed me the football and if he can be healthy and available Paul Chris will do just that for now it's Isaac Bennett and as Connor has those two touchdowns tonight. And Bennett tried to cut back. But Harriman and McCord were there to find him. 24 rushing touchdowns on the year for James Conner. And there's Clive Walford as they are wrapping up that right leg rock. You know what that means. For this evening, when you put it on ice, he's typically going to be done. Quite a season he had 44 receptions on the season and the most prolific tight end in the history of this program statistically speaking. And there's Wojtek on the quarterback run we've seen that a few times and the court again with another tackle. Well, you've seen a little more activity from that group up front, haven't you? You see McCord active in both of those tackles. Shannon telling us on the sideline Denzel Perryman as I would expect pretty vocal. So a timeout used by Miami as Pitt will be facing a third down here. Minute 20 remains. You know, you get to a spot like this on the schedule. There's been some disappointment with Miami. And you've used the term want to tonight yeah. and desire defensively. It really comes down to that in games like this when you're just one game north of 500. And it does, especially with an opponent like this. I mean, this isn't anything that you haven't seen on tape. I haven't seen on tape. They're going to run it a whole lot more than they're going to throw it. And we saw Miami way back when, remember, against Nebraska? Yeah. 
And what did Nebraska say? Just try to stop this run. Over yeah. 300 yards rushing right at these guys. That was a night that they just battled and battled and ran and ran. And it seemed many drives with Pitt doing the same thing here. And really testing and asking a question of this Miami defense. And it's going to be Perriman. He's going to have to stop this. And very adamant on the sidelines. He is the emotional leader. He's the guy that's going to play in the NFL. And right now about a mid-second round grade. Six foot 240 pounds. He doesn't suffer from any of that want to. He's willing to bring in this guy's in front of him, at least on this drive, have been much better. Third down and 10. Miami used the timeout, hoping for a stop here and a chance to create a scoring opportunity. And they will get that opportunity as Ibrahim was taken down by Thurston Armbrister. So Miami will use their second timeout. They'll have one remaining and 73 seconds remaining as Pitt will be forced to punt away. That's really good clock management there from Al Golden. Get the ball back to your offense, your playmakers. You had a hunch coming into this evening, as beat up as both of these defenses are, and Pitt in particular, there's going to be some points scored. And if you're Brad Kaya going into halftime, this drive so critically important. A group that was a little bit flat, I would say, in that first quarter has a chance to bounce back, feel good about themselves going into halftime. And get the ball back with plenty of time thanks to those timeouts. Six foot five Ryan Winslow on to punt away. Stacy Coley is back at his thirty five. And it goes out of bounds. So Pitt with the lead here on the road at Miami. The last win for Pitt at Miami, 1963. Pitt was great that year. They went 9 and 1. They finished number three. There's the team photo. They had that All America tackle named Ernie Borghetti. He would go on to become a dentist. His son would go on to become the sports information director, E.J. Borghetti, who we work alongside when we do pit games but that was a long time ago 1963 oh nine and one in the last ten road games at Miami but looking good here in the first half. So Miami without Clive Walford the senior tight end was a huge part of their offensive success one timeout remains and see if they can put themselves in scoring position Kaya as he swings it to Duke Johnson. One stiff arm and a burst of speed for Duke. So good with that stiff arm. He's been doing that for a long time. It was a weapon of his. Even playing Little League football. And that's the true freshman Amara right there. Feeling that stiff arm and giving Duke the opportunity to save that timeout and get out of bounds. Kaya. Threw it high into the outside for Braxton Berrios, the freshman receiver, as Amara had covered. 53 seconds remain, third and seven. That's about the third time now. Uh, one, one in the hands, one off of one hand from Thomas, and that time Amara on the true freshman, Berrios, and he sees the play right in front of him. That long out route all the way across the field. Awfully dangerous throws here from Brad Kaya. Third and seven. They run a stunt. He's got time over the middle and gets it complete to Malcolm Lewis. A first down will stop the clock. And they move the chains with a 14 yard reception. And no flag that time as he was looking for Lewis. This is where you always hear and it's especially true for still young quarterbacks even though Brad's had a wealth of experience this year and played in really tough environments. You never want to rush it. You want to play fast but never in a hurry. Second and ten now. Kaya. And that out is incomplete so it'll be third and long. Of course, we just saw the field goal range of Michael Badgley hitting from 48 moments ago. 
And this will be a real curious call here defensively for Matt House and what he wants to do. He likes to pressure on third down, but the last two third downs, you've seen the zone coverage and Kai and his crew able to exploit it. And you see a little pressure here or try to keep everything in front of you as you go to halftime. Six of nine they are in conversions here. Third and ten. Can he get this? As he was looking for Duke Johnson. And half minute remains as it went incomplete. And it's fourth down for Miami. As he sends out Justin Vogel, the punter. And you hear the reaction from the crowd. But this is the right call. You don't take this kind of risk. One touchdown game going into halftime. Yeah, the crowd's just reacting to what the scoreboard reads here. They came after that straight up the middle. Flag is down. As they tried to go right through that punt shield. Now we'll see if he got a piece of that ball. It looked like just by the action of Vogel's kick. There's no foul for roughing the kicker. Number 58 tipped the ball before hitting the kicker. The flag will be picked up. Quinton Orginus was able to get the ball here. You see Quinton is able to get that ball right there. Look at the fingers bending back. You can see that. It's great work there to zoom in and show those fingers bending back as he was able to get a piece of the ball and thus no penalty. It's dangerous with that plant foot right into the ground there too. So Vogel lucky to avoid injury. And Pitt able to avoid one last charge by Miami here in the first half. Rolling on the field, the defender tipped the ball before hitting the kicker. We'll review the play. Miami is challenging the ruling on the field. Miami's challenging the ruling on the field, but I think what our guys in the production truck were just able to show you will actually confirm that call on the field. So the coach's challenge being used here, but watch number 58 coming through, and you can see his fingers bending back. I know that velocity of the ball is hard to pick up, it becomes a blur, but the fingers reveal it here that indeed he was able to get a piece of that. The ball was tipped by number 58 before hitting the kicker. Miami will be charged with their third and final timeout of the first half and lose the remainder challenges for the rest of the game. You know, he said that the play stands. I think he meant to say that the play is confirmed. Undoubtedly, there was the video evidence that should have confirmed that play. But the challenge was unsuccessful, so it cost them the timeout. And that's meaningless here as a knee is taken by Wojtek and Pitt is going to go into the half with the lead. So Pitt trying to break that stretch and find success finally in South Florida and earn themselves away to a bowl game. Eight point margin as it stands now as we join Chris Cotter, Brett McMurphy, and Robert Smith for the Outback Steakhouse halftime report. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Tess. Outback halftime report. Robert Smith, Brett McMurphy, myself, Chris Cotter, Iron Bowl over on ESPN. Nick Saban looking for a little revenge after what happened at the end of last year's Iron Bowl. Early on, Nick Marshall swings it to Roe Thomas. Drops the ball, though, and Brett, first play of the game. It's a turnover. Third time they've done this year. This year, the previous two games, Auburn lost. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you what, T.J. Yeldon's trying to make him pay here early, scoring the touchdown on the ensuing drive. Seven nothing Alabama already. Later in the first, Blake Sims throws it up to the end zone. Great catch by Amari Cooper, Robert. Yeah, and these guys have developed such a rapport as the season's gone on. Amari Cooper, you can see going right up there, high pointing the ball. A great placement of that ball by Blake Sims. Yeah. What a story he's been this year. Remember everybody in the offseason talking about how it was going to be the Florida State transfer, Jacob Coker? Yeah. Well, Blake Sims, certainly, he's been playing his tail off. What do you make of the first half of this game so far? Then quickly, 14-6 to six the score. Well, you can't turn the ball over in games yeah. like this. It, it, it's so important. And, and what happens, anytime that you have a play like that where it's a lateral type throw, the running back has got to know if I don't catch this, I have to be. I have to at least be thinking about it 
to go ahead and try and stay live. You could see he didn't even he didn't even attempt to go after that. Right. Ball. Yeah, Auburn's ineffectiveness in the red zone. Auburn has ten plays inside Alabama's ten yard line, four yards, two field goals. That's the difference, right? Well, if Alabama can win this game, they represent the uh, West in the SEC championship game <laughs> against Mizzou next weekend. Could have been Mississippi State if they won the Egg Bowl and Alabama lost tonight. Dak Prescott trying to do his part in getting the Bulldogs a win. But look at this run, Robert. Jalen Walton goes right, cuts it back left, puts his foot in the ground, and turns up field. Well, such a tremendous job reversing the field right there. Generally speaking, as a running back coach, the coaches tell you, you know, don't reverse field unless you absolutely know, some, know something. Obviously, Jalen Walton knew something there. Bad tackling by Mississippi State, but as you can see, Jalen Walton, tremendous job, not just with the vision, but with the acceleration and the ability to separate from the defenders. He goes 91 yards, so that gave Ole Miss the 14-point lead. Prescott wasn't done, though. Finds the run, you Wilson in the end zone. 24-17, the lead at this point, but then Bo Wallace. Played very well in this game. Toss it to Jordan Wilkins on the sweep. Wilkins throws to Cody Core. That's it. Ole Miss takes the Egg Bowl 31-17. Florida, Florida State. This one at Doe Campbell Stadium. And Brett, we've seen it all year long, and we continue to see it. Jameis Winston struggled early, but then he hooked up a couple of times with his big tight end here, Nick O'Leary. Yeah, we've seen this movie before. Florida State does whatever it needs to do. Towards the end, hangs on and wins. Treon Harris finds Clay Burden here for the score. Gators are able to cut the lead 21-16 before the half. But Winston then again rolling downfield. Boom. You know it's a big hit when O'Leary, a big guy like well, that, gets if you, rocked. If you haven't seen the video of him surviving the motorcycle crash, you could see how that guy could survive a hit like that. Such a tremendous player. Pretty tough kid. Harris on a fourth and ten late in the game, under two to go. Fourth down, can't find the Marcus Robinson. So Florida State... <laughs> The Gatorhead trophy. They get the Gatorhead. They win 24-19. They put the helmet on it, too. Buckeyes <laughs> and Wolverines. Here early on, JT Barrett finds Nick Bandit for the score. His 43rd touchdown responsible for Big Ten record, breaking Drew Brees in 1998. Single season record. But then later in the game, Robert, he gets hurt. Boy, this is just devastating. Obviously, JT Barrett coming in and starting in that second week against Virginia Tech after Braxton Miller went down for the season. Gets that foot caught up underneath him. Breaks the ankle, dislocates it, going to have surgery tomorrow, out for the season. And such a great show of uh, sportsmanship right there by Devin Gard. Yep. Come no. up and offer. No question no about it there. there. Ezekiel Elliott took it in for a score there, 44 yards out. So Ohio State pulled away in the end. They get the win, so they'll play Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game next weekend. But they'll do it without J.T. Barrett. You look at the season he has had. Phenomenal, given the fact that you know took over for Braxton Miller in the summer. After that Virginia Tech game, he's had a great season, a Heisman Trophy kind of a season, Robert. Now they have to move on without him, so it's going to hurt not only the production on the field, but he became their leader on this team. Boy, he really did. And, you know, you talk about the offseason and what happened. Braxton Miller wasn't around in the spring, so it was J.T. Barrett and Cardale Jones. Got most of the snaps then, so it's not like he's completely green. He is a sophomore. He's been around. But clearly, this is, this is a, a tough loss, not just from the athletic ability that you lose, uh, and the playmaking ability and experience that you have from J.T. Parrott. But I think emotionally it's going to be tough for the players. But I think that they're going to I, – I believe Urban Meyer, based on what's happened already this season, yeah. he's got a very, he's got a very uh, close set of memories for this team to look back at and say, look, guys, a lot of people thought we were done after Braxton went down. Let's just get this thing going again. The more important question is how the – committee is going to look at this. Yeah, that's a bit the biggest difference between the playoff committee and the old system. The old system, it wouldn't affect Ohio State in this situation. They would simply look at what Ohio State had accomplished up to this point and in the Big Ten title game. Mm -hmm. What the committee will do, however, is project how good Ohio State will be going forward without JT Barrett. They'll get a one game yeah. uh, you know, example there against Wisconsin, and I think it boils down to basically Ohio State versus Baylor or TCU for that fourth spot if Alabama, Oregon, yeah. and um, Florida, State. Florida State holds serve. All right, well, we're going to go no huddle when we come back here on the Outback Halftime Report. We're going to show you some highlights of some other games. Great finishes, including one in Athens, Georgia. And we're going to talk about how the playoff looks like it's shaping up, not only when you talk about Ohio State, but Florida State struggling, Baylor struggling as well. It's coming up. This Halftime Report is presented by Outback Steakhouse. Outback, no rules, just right.
Welcome back to the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. Let's go no huddle. Two perfect teams to start it with. The Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State. Here, Marcus Mariota finding a wide open. Charles Nelson, 29 yards for the score. It's now 9 to nothing. This game over on ABC. Ducks with the early lead. Baylor and Texas Tech, Robert. Third quarter here. Seth Russell in the game. Because of an injury to Bryce Petty, mild concussion. He was knocked out of the game. Finds Levi Norwood. Baylor was up big oh. at that point in time, but they had to survive in this game. Well, a tremendous throw right there, though, by Russell. Got the ball just high enough. The safety took a chance. Wasn't able to elevate high enough. Great throw right there. 48-40, uh, the final in that game. Opening play of the Michigan State-Penn State game. R.J. Sheldon, 90 yards for the score. If you're Penn State, you're going to be offensively challenged in this game, Brett. You don't need to give up seven points right away. A big win for Michigan State guarantees them one of the New Year's six bowls, either the Fiesta, Cotton, or Peach. This was the big win in the Big Ten West. Winner represents the Big Ten in the uh, championship game. Fourth quarter, Joel Stave finding Robert Wheelwright for the score. Wisconsin wins by 10, Robert, although you saw uh, Melvin Gordon limp off in this game late with an angle. He did limp off late, but it looked like he got a help to get off to the sideline, but looked like he was putting weight on it on the sideline, which is a good sign. That's a, that is a good sign. Overtime, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech's Zach Lasky takes the handoff, pushes his way into the end zone. Georgia Tech would get an interception on Georgia's possession in the overtime session, and the Jackets win 30-24 to in Athens. Here's the top 10 in the college football playoff rankings at the start of the day, and Brett, the way you look at this right now, Florida State struggled, but they win. Florida State, I mean, Mississippi State loses. They'll drop out. The key is what do you make of now TCU, Ohio State, and Baylor, especially given the fact that Ohio State loses JT Barrett. And Baylor struggled today against TCU in Dallas. I mean, against Texas Tech. Right. Everyone brings up Baylor's won the head-to-head -head with TCU, but yep. until Baylor completes the Big 12 schedule, which would include a, a win against Kansas State if they win next week, I don't think you can jump them. I don't see Ohio State jumping TCU based on this week. TCU, very impressive win at an improving Texas team. Ohio State, they lose JT Barrett. And again, the committee has to project going forward how good the team is, which isn't fair, but that's... Well, that's, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't think that it's unfair, though. I mean, if, if you're going to say who the best four teams are and not say this is only about a resume, right. but how good that team is today, you can't definitively say that Ohio State is the same team with JT Barrett than they... Were, or than, than they are without him. Of course, we were saying the same thing about Ohio State without Braxton, Braxton Miller, yep. but then again, they, they lost that first game to Virginia Tech. Something interesting to watch here, though, with Baylor, Bryce Petty left that game, mild concussion. We'll see if he plays against Kansas State. But the thing for me is TCU, to me, the close win on the road to Baylor looks a lot better than the two-touchdown loss on the road from Baylor to West Virginia. So I think, yep. those, the, to me, that one that one looks clear. And TCU's done, so they're kind of sitting in the clubhouse on that one. Brett, when you see teams struggle, Florida State struggled, but they won. Baylor struggled today, but they won. Do you look at some of the other teams, like in Arizona maybe, kind of waiting in the wings? Do they still have a shot maybe to jump into this thing if they were to beat Oregon for the Pac-12 championship? Yeah, I, th I think Arizona probably in the new rankings will get up to about seven or eight. And I think if they beat or a number two Oregon again, yep. I think they would be in the top four. Well, be I mean, but yeah. but, but, you're, ta but you're, talking about a, you're talking about a team with two losses already. They're not going to jump over TCU, and they're not going to jump over undefeated Florida State. Yep. Well, they become big fans of Georgia Tech in the ACC championship game and of Kansas State playing against the Baylor well, team. Let's, well, let's end. not forget, the Iron Bowl's not over. If Alabama loses tonight, we could very well see a scenario where the SEC, for all the talk in the first rankings, there were three teams from the yep. SEC, and people were saying, well, we're going to have two. There could be none. It could be over. Heaven forbid. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like we went, almost faded to black when you said that right there. All right, we got the second half coming our way from South Florida, Miami, and Pitt James Conner, the Conivore. Taking this one in, one of two touchdowns for him in the first half. 21-13, Pitt with the lead. This halftime report is presented by Outback Steakhouse. Outback, no rules, just right.
as we welcome you back to South Florida and college football primetime where it is the ACC on ESPN. We got one team trying to celebrate getting the six and six the other trying to avoid it. Pitt's looking to become bowl eligible. They lead Miami 21 to 13 Joe Tessitore and Brock Heward with you down here at Sun Life Stadium. Pitt really made a statement early dominating with the run game had those two long touchdown drives in the first quarter. I would contend they made a statement that whole first half when you run it 24 of your 30 That's plays right. and you what basically tell them one pass in the second quarter is all they attempted. And while Connor, while the rest of the crew gets the credit and James Connor in particular, what the offensive line? Not very many times do we come back with a highlight reel of a right tackle, but that's exactly what we're going to do because T.J. Clemmings in the right side of that pit offensive line was really good. If you're going to be that committed to the run and basically just say, hey, we're going to run it right down your throats. We hardly even have to attempt to pass. Well, you've got to be good up front. That's exactly what T.J., his buddy Rotherham, Matt Rotherham next to him has been as well. A real commitment, a real conviction to that run, and T.J. getting it done at right tackle. 133 rush yards for Pitt. You can see going to that right side for James Conner, what he's been able to do tonight. And if he were healthy, fully healthy, I think you would see him with 15 carries right now, not just the eight. They love that power play, the Wisconsin philosophy and background, exactly what Paul Chris brings to the table. And you've seen so many good linemen develop at Wisconsin. That's what TJ's done. He's a defensive player, in fact. His first two years, and he's turned himself into a bona fide NFL difference maker. Stacy Coley from the goal line. Let's check in with Chris Cotter on the Iron Bowl. All right, Tess Taco Bell Studio update after an Alabama turnover. Nick Marshall going to work. Down the right sideline, finds Sammy Coates. Beautiful pitching catch right here. This gives Auburn the lead right now, 16 14, about 10 minutes left to go in the first half, guys. You know, when they say anything can happen in a rivalry game, the Iron Belt is built for that axiom. We've learned that through the years. Duke Johnson is chasing history tonight. And he is seven yards away from becoming Miami's all time leading rusher. And Duke trying to get it right here. Let's go down to Shannon. He comes just short. Flat comes down late. Well, guys, you mentioned the statement that Pittsburgh made on the very first half of this game, and Al Golden said that will be key for his Miami Hurricanes in this second half. Make a strong statement. Make a, a strong start. Also develop that running game. That was a key in their game plan coming into tonight. In fact, James Coley told me before the game, we have to crush it in the run game. And in the first half, they only ran for 39 yards. Now, as far as Paul Kreese, Chris, he told me, you know, they are doing everything right. He particularly mentioned the third and manageable situations. But he said, we're giving ourselves a chance. Shannon, right now. Personal foul, late hit number 95 on the defense. 15-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the play. First down. Officiating crew was clearing that up as it'll advance in 15 yards for Miami and Dobar, the backup tight end who was playing in place of Clive Walford, who left the game earlier, was slow to get up at the end of the play as well for Miami. I don't know about that. I, th I think unfortunately for Mosley Smith, he got pushed twice and just gets up in the face and says enough's enough. Duke Johnson for the record. There it is. And a nice run to become Miami's all time leader in rushing yards. And finally a run that's really representative of some of his skill set and that ability to move and cut. You can hear the stadium here reacting running through the tackle getting to that speed quickly converting those cuts into speed and becoming the number one rusher in the history of this school and that's why the officials went out and swapped footballs so that one can be taken and set aside for Duke Johnson second and one and here goes Yearby and the freshman from Central High here in town Goes for 22 yards. James Coley, offensive coordinator, Shannon said, 
before the game was going to be very committed to the running game not just to get Duke Johnson a record that's just the icing on the cake that comes with this commitment but knowing that his group functions best when they can set up that run you've seen the play action be effective and Dick Vermeil always used to say in order to run the ball effectively in the second half you got to be committed to the run and that's what Miami's been. I have tried to go with the out to Stacy Foley. He was covered by Pitts. And now there's a little something extra at the end of that play and as the flag came in there. You see teammates getting after it. That is Todd Thomas and Shakir Soto. And they're still jawing at each other over how that went down. Feliciano mixing it up with Soto and then Yerby tackled for a loss. And then Shakir Soto getting into it with Todd Thomas. And I gotta be honest with you, this is embarrassing. And and Thomas is trying to you know, straighten him out a little bit and then Soto pushes back. And Thomas is an emotional guy. And remember a season ago, Paul Chris actually had to suspend him. For a game, he was a guy that had to get himself right and handle and really control his emotions. A fifth year senior that said there's been a lot of maturation in his game, and boy, he and Soto there not on the same page and can't have that. That's not winning football. You can't do it in your front seven. You got to play together, play unified, not against one another. High on second and 13. And as he goes to Duke Johnson, who gets free and leaps into the end zone. Incredible individual effort by Duke Johnson. Guys fighting with one another, pointing fingers at one another. This is a top 10 nominee. Fighting one another and unable to fight and bring down Duke Johnson. Duke, the second leading receiver, showing you the explosive capabilities that he has. Frankly, this offense has when you get their speed into some green grass. It's just what Miami needed to open up this second half. And Duke did it his way. Chasing Otis Anderson. He broke the record in style. Miami's all-time leader. And then he capped it with something special on the score.
Clinton Portis was among the greats that Duke Johnson passed on the way to becoming the all-time leading rusher in Miami history. And the real C. Portis tweeting out moments ago, congratulations to Duke Johnson. We talked about that brotherhood in the open. They, they really do. There's a family environment when you come to school here. And in the heyday when this thing was really rolling, and that bond was as strong as any program had internally. Kudos to Duke. And here goes Boyd. He gets free. And a great return by Tyler Boyd. So Pitt is in good position as we look back with our LL Bean drive recap. Well, it was just hard for Duke Johnson in the first half to get into space, and he had to do it himself. And he breaks the tackle there of Shakir Soto. That was the record breaker. And then you see, well, the first time I've seen this on a football field in my eight years of covering the game, guys fighting on the field. And guess what? Very next play. Two more broken tackles and Duke making this a one point game. 53 yard kickoff return by Boyd. So Pitt starts on the plus side. Great field position to respond to that Miami score. And Chickalo with the tackle of Connor at the 40 yard line. We'll see how quickly James can get that hip warmed up again. We got loose in. Pre-game felt good enough to not practice all week long dealing with that hip injury and then you go into the locker room for 20 minutes I, I guess the advantage if there's any place you're going to play in college football and play in South Florida on a beautiful night this is the kind of evening that for the Panthers anyway they can get Connor loose again. Connor was met right away but somehow kept his balance and was able to spin and make something positive out of that is Harris and Kirby were in the backfield. Don't you just feel them reaching? Yes. They're just not finishing. You're not seeing just the force. And, and, and typically, when you know what you're looking at, and you've watched all the game tape on this guy, you're watching that tape all week saying, man, I got to bring it. You can't arm tackle Connor. You have to drive through him with everything you have. Third and two. And that eye formation, he took that option just to the left side, and that's enough for the first down. Yeah, it's not a reach and grab. It, 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 you reach and grab, you're hanging on, and you're getting carried and pulled. Even Connor playing at 75 percent. I mean, I mean, is that a fair estimation? I'll tell you what. When the ball's in his hands, he cranks it up again. But every time. He's coming off the field, and you could see the even bigger hip pad. I think they borrowed Otis Anderson's old <laughs> hip pad. <laughs> Thank goodness they didn't use brutal. Otis Anderson's shoulder pads, or he wouldn't fit through the portal to get out to the field. Here's Wojtek now. Quick strike, and he gets Boyd. And Boyd in the open field as he makes his way to the 15-yard line. That's a 17-yard reception for Tyler Boyd. What happens when you see so much run, you're going to get that eighth defender right around the box, and you're just going to play cover three. And you play cover three with all these guys in the box, it becomes a simple pitch and catch. And Boyd is smooth, man. He is effortless in his game. He's got one more year at Pitt before his game is going to get to the next level. He is a really fine football player. Single back is Chris James. As they run counter and he's able to break free for a touchdown. J.P. Holtz coming from that tight end position set up a key block and Chris James took it right in. What a response by Pitt. And guess which side of the line they ran to. The guy that we highlighted right out of halftime. T.J. Clemens on that right side. You can see they washed down that entire line. An excellent job on the edge by J.P. Holtz. The junior tight end and just too easy there and what a response from Pitt. Miami opened up the second half just the way they wanted to and then Pitt was able to do their thing. As Wojtek managed that drive James finish it off great blocking leads to great results.
ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Pizza Hut. We're taking pizza where it's never been before. And Jiffy Lube. Leave worry behind and stop by Jiffy Lube today for a signature service oil change. It's a beautiful setting down there at the University of Miami in Coral Gables. We're just north in Miami Gardens, Florida, Sun Life Stadium, where Pitt has an eight point lead. They've lost eight straight to Miami. And it was. Tyler Boyd who had a 53 yard kickoff return moments ago that set up Pitt's rushing touchdown by Chris James. As Blewett kicks away and Coley will take a knee. Shannon. Well, Joe, you would think I, would, I was holding a million dollar necklace right here. We have the Miami equipment team down here ready to take this ball into the locker room. This, of course, is the record breaking ball for Duke Johnson. Going home to his mommy, no less. Cassandra Mitchell told me this was going home to her if he broke the record. You know, Duke told me this week that he never thought he was going to be able to break the record because they were just so large. He would look at them every single day and he would see all of the great running backs that came before him. Just an honor to be mentioned with those guys. Coming in tonight, it it was not a goal of his. He said just to be on that list, but of course, happy to do it in front of this home crowd. And consider everything he's been through in the course of the past year, the broken ankle, suffered against Florida State, working hard to get himself back. And frankly, some of the challenges of where the program's at and what they have had to endure as a program, put themselves into, but a lot different than those predecessors. Those guys that played in that Orange Bowl when they were rolling, man, and had it going. Got a tattoo of his mother, Cassandra Mitchell, right on his arm. He lost his dad to ALS when he was only 14 years old, but Cassandra and her husband, Dwayne, have been rooting Duke on every step of the way, looking for moments like this, as that's complete to Philip Dorsey for a 12-yard reception. Find ways to get Dorsett and Duke into the green grass. Pitt's going to give you cushion. They're going to try to keep and eliminate the big play and keep things in front of you. And you have to have the patience and the resolve, both as play caller and as quarterback, to just play that pitch and catch and take the easy completions. Gus Edwards getting some work here, and he's wrapped up by KK Mosley Smith. Of course, you mentioned Dorsett and Duke Johnson, how big a role they play in this offense, and Clive Walford, who's the third part of that equation when you watch Miami this year out of the game. And I think all guys are going to be moving on to the next level, and I'll include Duke in that conversation. I think this is going to be his final game in this stadium. Obviously, bowl eligible and lots of different scenarios with different bowls they could go to, but I really do believe that Duke has given enough and more than enough to this program in time to take his game to the league. Second and eight. Kaya. As he tried to find Lewis there. He was running across the field in line with Kaya. And will be third down. Really good on third down in that first half for Miami, who has struggled on the season. 103rd in college football to be at 6 and 10. But remember, a lot of those conversions were with your big tight end, Clive Walford, who has been knocked out of this game with a knee injury. Got to find a new security blanket in third and passing situations. Third and eight. And this is an absolute blitz look. And let's see once again if Pitt will back out of that pressure look or they'll stick to their blitz. Double A gap pressure. They stunt it. It's picked up. Third and eight. And it's complete to Dobard for a first down. So Standish Dobard, who's in there playing in place of Clive Walford. Moves the chains for Miami and that's a really big conversion and you do all the work and you go in and if you're Standish you've watched Clive get those reps in practice and you've watched him in that first half get those same completions that time just a 10 yard out route to move the sticks and use his size and strength on the undersized safety Mitchell Dick Johnson now able to get it to the 42. Forty nine yard night well short of what he averages but enough to get that all time record but I circled the 14 there that's the important part continuing to feed him even though you've not seen that long gainer that's going to come against this group if you continue to stay committed to calling that run let's go. 
Kaya looking over his options checks down to Johnson who has met right away good defensive play by Matt Galambos that's a loss of four this is the one area is, is I look at Brad Kaya next year and all the productivity from this season this is the one area do you see there when the first outlets covered and the second outlet is covered and you see you could feel at times some of that and you don't want to say panic because that's such a negative word but just stay in that pocket man you got to trust and believe in that pocket because once you get flushed and then you throw out the timing of your checkdowns you allow that defense to swarm on a Duke Johnson and finish that tackle and force it yet again another third and long. Kaya threw it underneath for Stacy Coley. Tried to stretch out, but it'll be fourth down. This is one of the more productive games that Coley has played in some time, and you love that effort. There's a lot of trust there, quarterback to receiver, putting up in that space and believing that Coley's going to go get it. In that no man's land, uh, just inside the 39 yard line, facing a fourth and four, so the offense will. Stay on the field. This is where you have trusted your tight end earlier. This looks like a pass route and a short one. And wide open is door set. So a first down for Miami as they convert the fourth down. 20 yard reception. And you get in that tight stack there, and that's the true freshman Maddox. And you've already given up the nearly 50 yard play, the touchdown. You know you're going to get some cushion there. I like the guts to go for it in no man's land, and even better, the execution to pick on the true freshman with your senior wide receiver. Two tights in the game, 22 personnel with the I formation. And here's Gus Edwards and they can't make anything of it as Todd Thomas was right in the middle waiting on it. He sure was and he's been very active tonight and active earlier with Shakir Soto. We saw some of that disagreement on the field and here's the natural conversation between senior Thomas and the true sophomore Soto a young player still in his development and Thomas will tell you he was really an emotional guy. He was much like Soto man. He would come off. His rocker at times showing some of the maturation there to get on the same page while well, that offense was on the field scoring a touchdown. 11th play of the drive that started at their own 25. Incomplete as Lewis was the intended target. You're living dangerously here, Joe. Once you're getting into a bunch of these third down predicaments and situations, you've converted the last couple. I'd be curious here if and what Pitt is going to do defensively. I am third down, nine of eleven tonight. Really sharp. Seven first downs. This is third and ten. Pressure off the edge, over the middle. It was a deeper crossing pattern, and then the under pattern, and it's going to be fourth and ten. So they'll bring Michael Badgley. And he's had himself a good night back out onto the field. You had a sense you're going to see a little different pressure there, and that's exactly what Matt House, D coordinator, brings with the free safety there. Vinipal getting involved in the action, forcing that throw early in the incompletion. Made his career long from 48 earlier tonight. Badgley's good night continues and the margin is cut to five. 28 23 here in South Florida. Pitt's still on top.
Everybody's wondering who's in. It's the college football playoff top 25 rankings show Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Mississippi State lost the egg bowl. Brock, I love the position TCU is now in. They have a Thanksgiving night win. I think they're in prime position here. They just feel like a more balanced football team than Ohio State. More balanced than Baylor, who feels to me very one-dimensional. Baylor needed to dodge a two-point conversion from Texas Tech today. Remember what Boyd did earlier on the kickoff return. Here he goes again. Just really relaxed and fluid, Tyler Boyd. A lot like the run game, because it's exactly what Pitt has done. 28 of 35 offensive snaps have been this commitment to the run game. And it's not just one back. It's not been just James Conner. You've seen Boyd's Zeck. You've seen the freshman as well. This is the senior Bennett. Chris James here finishes off the drive. To be honest, this feels a little bit like Georgia Tech. This one-dimensional 80% run on the evening with multiple backs getting involved. Your quarterback as well. And why not? Keep running until Miami can prove they can stop it. 37-yard kickoff return. That's good starting position again. As James Conner takes it for a yard. Dallas Crawford with the tackle. Conner. Connor with 24 touchdowns on the year now and playing through pain in his hip he was hurt last week against Syracuse didn't play in the second half last week but he's come out here and played through the pain as best he can second and nine met at the line of scrimmage and brought down by Darian Owens Back to back snaps there. What's the difference? Well, you saw the safety involvement on the first down snap, and that time Owens, the true freshman, does his part. When you got a big back, you have got to make him stutter in the backfield and slow him down. A much better job of that on the two early downs. Now you put Pitt in a position outside of their comfort zone. Got to find a way to get the ball to your difference maker. Third and nine. Voitek. Almost had Boyd in stride. Gave it a shot that time. And speaking of a shot, that's exactly what he took. He knew it was coming. He can sense the pressure coming right in his face from Jermaine Grace. And he tries to put just enough air, and that's a play that Boyd usually comes down with. You can see his level of disappointment. Because if it's in his proximity, Boyd typically finds it. Winslow will be punting away to Corey. And I came loose for a moment. Thought he was able to jump right on it. So maybe a little momentum here, an opportunity for Miami. What do you want to see out of their offense? I'd like to see four and eight get the ball a lot and get them in the open field as much as possible. I mean, you're coming down to it now, 17 minutes left in your season. Rely and lean on your best players. Don't you want to see those guys and their explosiveness yeah, I mean, in the open so field? Yeah, so explosive. I mean, what Duke Johnson was able to do on that opening drive of the second half alone, both the run game and the receiving game on him. And I think you see it from Pitt. I mean, I, I can circle where that ball is going. It's going to your best player, and they find a way. Even if you have to force feed Boyd, they're going to move him around and find formations and opportunities to get your best players involved. There should be a lot of door set and a lot of Duke Johnson down the stretch. Play action. Kaya. Complete and as Coley as the intended target. And there you're trying to use Dorsett as a weapon, and he's going to take two with them. And unfortunately, the longer developing plays, that pocket collapsing right around Kaya. Coley covered. I like a first down pass. I don't mind that kind of aggressiveness. Get your best players the football when the game matters the most. Direct snap now here will go to Duke Johnson. And Johnson takes it straight up the middle. And Pinnapal makes the tackle that time. It'll be third down for the Canes. The 
this has been a blitz down. You saw blitz on the last third and ten. My hunch here is hit defensively, and you can see those guys starting to linger around a little bit here, try to get some pressure in the face of Kaya. Ball was tipped and then harmlessly falls to the ground, but it's going to be a three and out for Miami. And that'll do the trick instead of bringing extra people that time a line stunt. Moody gets his hands up in the air feels the timing of that pass and it's a pretty big stop there. And Vogel this is low not much hang time there as Boyd fields it right near midfield. Now we're here at the home of the Dolphins and the Dolphins will be up in New York it's Monday Night Football at 815 on ESPN no other night is Monday night Joe you were busy on this set of SEC Nation this morning but Very it was busy. fun to see Joe Willie in his big fur coat we had a great so had I, I thought that coat. you know we had a great visit with Joe Namath when SEC Nation was down in Tuscaloosa for that Florida game and I'll tell you he follows college football so closely lives and dies with every Bama game. Play action. Voitek. A lot of time to set up. And then is able to find Boyd. And Tyler Boyd. You know, I love the leadership of this guy and his, his care for winning. Great story about his high school, Clarendon High. Great for football, but they were struggling in baseball. They had lost 48 straight. And he said, I want to do something about it. He joined the baseball team and helped break that losing streak. Had an inside the park home run back then. Couldn't stand to see Pretty his awesome. school lose. Denzel Perriman is still down at the end of that play. out of the gun here on second and seven. Oh, he just overthrew Boyd that time. Boyd's uh, looking down at his hand there. So it'll be third and seven here, final minute of this third quarter. He stretched out for it and he had some Fire coming his way with Dallas Crawford. And tell me that didn't feel a little bit like the vertical seam route touchdown from a week ago with Virginia. The one handed incredible catch Cavaliers made on the other end. That just off. But the vertical game is how you attack a single safety, three deep coverage team like Miami. Third down and seven. And a flag comes in as there was some tugging and pulling down there at about the five yard line with Dantes Ford and Artie Burns. Pass interference, defense number one. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul and an automatic first down. And you hear secondary coaches all the time say, trust your technique. You actually got some man coverage there. You're locked up. But the minute you hold there in plain view and, and you can see grabbing there the jersey, you're just going to draw that penalty. Trust your technique. Trust your speed that you can come back, cut underneath that route. Instead, 
you get bit a, a first down and you got a sense here this is going to be the 250 pound halfback getting a heavy dosage inside the 10. And James Conner already two rushing touchdowns tonight 24 on the year. It is a spot foul for pass interference and an automatic first down. Where you keep an eye on that 270 pound fullback as well, number 31, Parrish. We've highlighted Clemmings, the right tackle. This has been a run heavy to the right side of the line kind of offense tonight and very, very productive. And so underappreciated, Parrish, such a big part of the run game, success as a lead blocker. Watch him here in this I formation. He's trying to find somebody to get to. Instead, Perriman is pulling James Conner back. Tacklers is grabbing at his left knee here. See five more tackles to add to his total. Of what's been a very good year. Finalist for the Butkus Award. And you can see his left knee here as he's dragging Connor back right there. It was almost like his left foot gets stuck on the cleat there of Connor. And he awkwardly falls. You've already lost your other senior, Clive Walford, one of your real difference makers offensively. And Perriman's a guy, man, he makes this group go. Over 340 career tackles here. You know, and Shannon was commenting on how vocal Denzel Perryman was, especially in that first half where Shannon was reporting about the way he was talking to his teammates and what he wanted to see out of them. And one of five finalists for the Buckus Award as well, trying to get that knee right. Yeah, Joe, he was extremely vocal, especially in that first half. Frustrated as well. Just keep in mind his last home game here in this Miami Hurricane uniform. He knew it was going to be an emotional one. He knew it was going to be a tough one. And he has really challenged his guys defensively to step up throughout this entire game. And that is the end of the third quarter. 28 to 23. Can hit hold on and make their way to the postseason. Stick around and find out.
Joe Tessitore, Brock Hewer, Shannon Spake with you here in Miami, where Pitt is knocking on the door to increase their lead to start this fourth quarter. 28-23 as it stands right now. Pitt has lost eight straight games to Miami. Haven't won down here in South Florida since 1963. Big fella usually takes you the direction of the play. Connor. As he lowered that shoulder and was able to get to the one yard line. He met up with Artie Burns, the cornerback. And that's going to be a fun tandem to watch over the next few years. Jamar Barris, 31, a 270 pound, just sophomore, just like his buddy Connor next to him. That's a lot of beef in the backfield, a lot of beef up front. And you get a sense that this is going to be run right at it. Remember, went up and over to break Dorsett's record the last time. Went up that time, flag came down, but he didn't go over. I think that's going to be offsides, Joe, in the neutral zone for Miami. Offsides, defensive tackle, jumped in the neutral zone at the snap. Penalty is half the distance. Replay third. Watch the movement here. Michael Weish. A lot of that weight moving forward to have to get back out of the neutral zone. He is 330 pounds. So it's still third and goal here. Connor. Where is that ball? They're marking him short. The linesman on the near side is placing that left foot there. Remember, that's the direction they're going in, so that's the foot that you look for would be the left foot. They're marking him short. Thurston Armbrister made a nice play right here. Watch the ball. Does it reach that line? That was really close. No hesitation whatsoever from Paul Chris right now. Short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. So they're going to review this. But for the time being, it's fourth down, and the offense was staying on the field because obviously a field goal would make the margin still one possession. But you be the judge. It's in his right arm, so watch his right arm here. There's the ball. Does it cross the white line? And watch his knee and his shin at the moment where that ball goes forward. Is he down at any point here as he leans forward? You can see his legs starting to collapse there, and that's where they're going to rule him down as they watch the shin hit the turf. I think that's exactly what that side judge is looking at right down the line. Does any part of that football break the plane? While that shin goes down on the ground, and we'll say it again, I think this call is going to stand. After a new, rolling on the field stand, fourth down. There's just nothing there that's going to settle any dispute, and nothing to question here, I think, from Paul Christ. His team is built for moments like this. Fourth and goal from inside the one-yard line. Perryman, the senior, his last home game. Connor, the 250-pound big power back. Which way will it go? Quarterback sneak as Wojtek scores. All eyes on Connor, so Chad Wojtek takes it in on fourth and goal. What a great call. I really like that call. You've shown in the three previous snaps that deep run, right? You're going to turn it and hand it and allow that defense to get going. This time the quarterback the sneak attack and that's clearly over the line and that's an excellent play call from Paul Chris and tremendous execution from Wojtek as well. And a big strong arm quarterback who's really secure in a spot like that too Brock. Strong powerful and you beat that defense to the punch. So Pitt pushes the margin to 12.
can't possibly watch Pitt in Miami and not think of the most famous sports connection between the Iron City School and South Florida. Dan Marino, for so much Brock's been made through the years of the 83 NFL Draft when the Pitt Panthers star, future Hall of Famer, passed over five times, was the sixth and final quarterback taken. Top Pitt player taken that year was an offensive lineman, Jimbo Coburn. How about that offensive line for Pitt tonight? Been pretty good. 32 of the 42 plays from the Panthers tonight have been leaning on those big guys up front. Five touchdown drive special teams has helped the kickoff return game, Boyd in particular. Yeah, but the big boys have been a difference maker. Foley's going to take it out from the end zone. And that wasn't a great decision to do so. Let's check in with the studio and Chris. All right, Tess, here with Robert Smith, Iron Bowl over on ESPN, and Robert, Nick Marshall, and Sammy Coates are dialed in. Boy, they really are, and this first one against, is against Eddie Jackson, just flat out gets beaten coverage right here. You can see Sammy Coates turning on the Jets, showing them the tail lights. And that was with just over under a minute left to go in the first half. Auburn gets the ball back again, a little trickeration. Marshall again finds Sammy Coates. Auburn 383 yards of offense in the first half. Most an Alabama team has ever given up in a half under saving, guys. Heck of a game going on in the Iron Bowl as Duke Johnson goes for two and a half yards. You know, Duke Williams is back healthy playing for Auburn. And to have him on the other side, it really opens things up for Sammy Coates, Brock. Joe, it was just a few weeks ago talking about, well, how about the SEC and two teams in the Final Four? Well, this they better is, hope Alabama wins to have one. I mean, for, for the SEC right now, as it stands, it's worst-case scenario with Mississippi State losing. They are out of the conversation. And Alabama falls to Auburn. I don't, they're not staying in the top four. Oh, the SEC West is uh, cannibalizing itself here yes. with all the talent and the fact that everybody can beat anybody else on any any game play. Pressure here on Kaya as he just has to get rid of it, and that's just beyond the goal line there, that flag. As that was Anthony Gonzalez coming in. Right in full view there, Gonzalez, and you're just reaching and grabbing. And it feels like I said that to you a number of times, both in your tackling, you're reaching and grabbing. Corners have been reaching and grabbing, and that time Flowers beaten by the linebacker, Gonzalez, and all he can do is reach and grab and put Miami in another third and passing situation. Third and seven for the freshman quarterback. He was checking down to Johnson and threw that incomplete. He was winging it to the side there. So he'll be punting away. He'll be punting away. Bad decision to bring the ball out. Just think of the hidden yards tonight, right? The penalties that have been critical against Miami. The kickoff returns that Boyd has set up. You try to run it out. Coley does. He gets stuffed at the 10. Pitt, Pitt has really tilted this field, not just with the run game, but this phase as well. Oh, this is not a good punt at all by Vogel. But it takes a good bounce. What a fortunate bounce. Are you kidding me? It stays in bounds and runs down the sideline? Boy, did he make the most of that. That ended up going for 59.
ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Goodyear, chosen by experts for superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. And DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. The neon glow in the Art Deco of South Beach. These were about 35 minutes northwest here in Miami Gardens where we have problems for Miami. They need to get that offense going. They need their defense to find a stop here at home in the fourth quarter against a hungry pit team that's trying to make a bowl game. Ball start number 23 five yard penalty first down. And my hunch is that ball was going Tyler Boyd's way. Four of the six completions for Pitt tonight. And typically, when those receivers try to get up on the snap like Tyler just did, that was going to be a little play action first down shot. He's been targeted seven times tonight. Boytek only has six completions. Boyd has four of them. As Bennett gets out to the 27 yard line. And this is a really pivotal drive for a Miami team that's lost two in a row that was sitting at three and three one three in a row and really physically was running the ball and doing a lot of good things. And I think Al Golden knows that this better be a three and out. If you're Miami try to get the ball back to your offense that has definitely slowed here in the last two possessions. This is danger zone for the Hurricanes. Golden trying to avoid three game losing stretch here to finish off the season. Maybe leveled off at six and six if they can't pull this out. And Voitek gets it complete. Boyd had a knee down, but he does have that first down. And I saw that promo coming up for Utah State and Boise. Folks, that's a key game. There's a lot happening in college football today that has great interest with the college football playoff and the four that will contend for the championship. But Boise against Utah State, the New York, the New Year's Six Bowls. Forget the BCS, it's the New Year's Six is the new lingo. Boise's playing for a spot in that with what happened to Marshall this week. And if they can win the Mountain West, they got to get through Utah State tonight. So good football still to come. Chris James, good looking freshman back from Chicago. You had pointed to Boyd, targeted seven times, eight times now, and five completions. And I am sure that a Miami fan is saying, <laughs> It is run game and boy, can you account for him? Can you double cover him? Can you find a way to take this guy out of the game? Because both in special teams and he's been really their only option. But real credit to Pitt and Paul Christ and what his group does because they move him around just like this. They get him into different formations. They get in the bunch. They play him inside. They play him outside and do a beautiful job of getting him involved in different ways. Chris James getting work here with Connor. Watching from the sideline, but James looks like Connor with the way he ran right there. Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers will get started at 10 a.m. Chris Berman and the guys will get you up with all the injuries, analysis, and news for a full day in the NFL. It's Tyreek McCord, plays that defensive end position for Miami. Chicolo was slow to get up as well. We've seen Perriman a couple of different occasions come off the field. Clive Walford has been knocked out of this game. This has been about some of the just the blunt force trauma that Pitt has really shown from beginning to end. Denzel Perriman just looking over. I mean, for this defense to struggle the way they have tonight when for many of these guys it's really the last hurrah for him and them here at Sun Life Stadium. First down for Pitt. Give real credit to that crew. I mean it's been those big boys up front. There's no no doubt about it. I mean more often than not they are winning that first initial surge and that's what you need with these backs. That's what you need within this system. Can you win at the point of attack? And more often than not, in this run game tonight, they have. They've created some of those opportunities for the backs to just plow behind, and they've moved the piles. Motion perish. And look at the hole 
for Chris James. Ball came out that time, but Pitt was able to recover it. James upset with himself. He had a great surge there on that run. It was J.P. Holtz who was in the right place to recover that fumble. Well, it is so evident with Pitt and what they like to do is they block down, and J.P. Holtz has been a big part. Add him to this offensive line as well as the ball bounces Pitt's way, but you can just see it. You can just see that initial wave and that push and that surge. Freshman will take a break, and Isaac Bennett will be in there with Voitek. And Bennett only gains a yard that time as Fentress shot in to make that tackle. And that's been the difference. I mean, when they have really stopped them at the line of scrimmage, what have you seen? You've seen Fentress blitz. You've seen Jamal Carter blitz. You've seen him try to shoot those gaps. And that's Mark D'Onofrio, the defensive coordinator, knowing that he has got to get those secondary defenders involved. And why wouldn't you? As much as Pitt has been committed in calling this run game tonight. And you think about third and four here, ball in the 45, under eight and a half minutes. This is where Miami has to have a stop. And that's Boyd that you point out in that bunch formation to the near side as the flag came down and looked like there was some motion. Snap infraction by the center. Five yard penalty. Third down. Alex Officer snapping the ball and see so do a little double clutch yap. Very different play call, third and four to third and nine. But won't make a difference as they're going to continue to try to find a way to get Boyd the ball. Third down and nine. Can Miami get the ball back for their offense? And Weatherspoon is going to be about two and a half yards short. And you can see Voitek's reaction. He knew the difference between third and four and third and nine. Third and four, that is a conversion. And Paul Chris knows it as well. And he's going to put the ball back in Miami's hands and make them drive the long field. But they know exactly the difference of that penalty right there and really forcing the punt and giving the ball back to Miami. So Ryan Winslow. As he gets that back rotation forcing the fair catch inside the 15 yard line. 719 remaining. Miami needs to get going quickly from Kaya. We'll see if they can do it when we return.
Well, with a win here tonight, Pitt will become bowl eligible. But interestingly enough, that has not been the focus for Coach Chris this week. Rather, he has told his players, go out there, try to win a game so that the seniors that are part of this team can play another game with you guys. Watching some of the seniors from this defense on the sideline, Ray Vinapal was one of the guys just pacing the sidelines, waiting to get back out there. Not a lot of adjustments. They know what they have to do. To Shannon's point. No, I mean, Pitt, Pitt's extremely young. Seniors have a chance tonight, but this is a young team that wants to grow and keep the program headed in the right direction. A bowl game and 15 more practices would do that. And I can say this is a young Miami team. Not when there's nine juniors and seniors starting on your defense. Not when a Dorsett and a Duke Johnson, I think, is going to play his final game here. And this is a Miami team that's seven minutes away from staring down a three game losing streak and a six and six record. Kaya gets underneath the door set. Can Dorsett get the edge? He is ridden down after a gain of nine by Lafayette Pitt. And now you got to have some urgency here. They're down and one, under seven minutes to play here, trailing by 12. Gus Edwards, the big back at 230 pounds in the game. And he spins for it, and he should have the first down. The first hit was made by Todd Thomas. Flag comes in late at the end of that play. Tucker is walking away disappointed. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Number 44 on the offense. The first down was a game. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal, first and ten. So they get the first down out of that, but they get backed up. <laughs> and that is just incredibly foolish. And the penalties have been unfortunately a part of the story this season. And while you're playing a true freshman quarterback and there's a learning curve for him and you got to grow up around him, you got to be good in special teams, you got to be good in penalties, you got to be good with those hidden yards. Unfortunately, you're down the stretch, and really tonight as well, you have not been. So first down backed up to the 13-yard line. As that is incomplete, as Coley couldn't stay in, and I wonder if he got caught up with the equipment there on the sidelines as he extended himself here. Let's watch this. It was a tremendous effort. Saw him land to the outside there right on that bag next to the kicking net. So the medical staff and trainers for Miami are across the entire field. Uh, Stacy Coley see him came down on somebody on the sideline there and then he stayed down. As they take care of Coley, we'll take a short break.
Chris Cotter in studio. Iron Bowl early second half following Blake Sims' third interception of the day. Nick Marshall finds Quan Bray his third touchdown pass of the day. 33-21 Auburn on top over on ESPN. Joe Brock. What a night for Nick Marshall with three touchdown passes down there in Tuscaloosa. As Stacy Coley was able to walk across the field after that last play where he stayed down for a little bit. Second and ten. Miami was backed up. 15 yard penalty. Speaking of backed up look how deep those safeties are for Pitt. Good. Beyond Bilbard. Devin Cook was coming in and applying some pressure to Kyle. And when you become one dimensional and you don't run the ball. You've seen a lot more of this in the second half. 16 times he was hit, he was harassed, he was taken to the ground against Virginia. And in this second half, as you've seen some of that run go away, and already 18 passing attempts. Kai is just one of his last 10. Third and 10 now. And that is complete. Let's see where they mark Dobart here. You see that. Linesman on the near side. It's going to be very, very close to that unofficial line that you see there. So Riley Johnson, our ACC referee, will call for the measurement. And that was a really nice catch from Dobar. Just three receptions on the season. He's been a little bit more of the blocking tight end, while Clive Walford has led this team in pass catching receptions. Dobart has three receptions. Remember. Walford left the game earlier. So he's matched his season total, none bigger than that one on third and ten. Just short. Down 12, under six minutes to play. Desperate times call for desperate measures here. This feels like a quarterback sneak. I think in this kind of down and distance, you better make sure that you've got everybody on the same page. The biggest risk here in moments like this, false starts, and some of the penalties that have already been an issue. You've got to make sure you secure the snap, get everybody on the same page, and you get some push here to get those six inches. Fourth and one. Not much of a push at all, but the second effort and falling forward likely got it for him. And it is. It's a first down. But that initial surge, it wasn't going to be there, Brock. No, it wasn't. And you can't rush it. It's <laughs> quarterback sneaks can be the simplest of plays, but there is a feel to that. And a good job there of Kaya having the awareness, getting stuffed at the point of attack, having the awareness. To still move the sticks. Time to get going here for Kaya as he takes the underneath stuff this time and gets it to Barrios. Delay here, Duke Johnson, a nice stiff arm, and then look at him go. He is one of the very best with that stiff arm, and then hitting the gas. 28-yard run by Duke Johnson. Lateral quickness, getting the top end in a hurry, and then that stiff arm. And that's a linebacker. That's Gonzalez there, who feels the full brunt of it. Some guys just know how to do it. Timing. And Coley back in the game. Did he keep his balance? Wow. Todd Thomas with the hit. And then Coley kept his feet going and went for 21. Look at this. He doesn't hit the ground here. Pushes off with his left hand and picked up more. This hat. Reminder that Wednesday the ACC Big Ten Challenge is back 
on ESPN. You got Iowa taking on number five, North Carolina. And then it is a really good one in the nightcap. Duke and Wisconsin, number four and number two. That's Wednesday, ACC Big Ten Challenge on ESPN. And you want to know what I think every time, this time of year when we get to this moment? I love that in football. Just one, give me a week in September that's the ACC versus the Big Ten or the Pac-12 versus the SEC. And I know there's a lot of moving parts in football and it's a lot harder and the schedules are made years in advance. And you can give me all the explanations in the world, but how much fun would it be in September to have just that conference versus conference, showdown versus showdown like you see in college basketball? Well, I'll tell you what, today on the mid to lower level, we had a little bit of an ACC-SEC challenge and the ACC had a very good day in it with some of the matchups, some of the rivalry games. Kaya to the end zone, he overthrows it. And you saw Clemson beat South Carolina today. Georgia Tech in a thriller in overtime against Georgia. Louisville 44 to 40 against Kentucky. There was some good action between ACC and, and SEC. Florida State. <laughs> Florida State once again doing it against Florida in the S4-0. The ECC versus the SEC today. Second and ten. And Gorsett hits it for a first down. It will be first and goal Miami. Under four and a half minutes remaining here. Was looking underneath for Johnson, but he was tied up with Gonzalez. So it'll be second and goal with 4.07 remaining. Just got to avoid the sack here. Touchdown to check down to throw away. And you get in the red zone and you're in these passing situations. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind seeing that draw once again. That draw very effective earlier spring and Duke Johnson loose. And he's the one guy you trust in a spot like this. Second and goal. And they do run the ball with Johnson, but he only gets to the five yard line as Soto made the tackle. So it'll be third and goal. We're under four minutes. That's right. And that's a critical point right there. That run play, that's some of the risk that when you don't put it in the air, look at the amount of time that that one play for one and a half yards is going to take. Every one of those seconds so precious here down the stretch. Kaya to the back of the end zone, and he overthrew Coley. So the math demands that you go for it here obviously down 12 and this is where you'd really love to use your big tight end Clive Walford with seven reception touching on receptions on the season coming in play of the game to this point fourth and goal Miami trying to keep hope alive here. Kaya. That ball was batted away by Pitts. So a turnover on downs and Pitt will be looking to close the door when we return. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. All right, Tess Brock, just a programming note here. Everybody knows if, if you don't. Well, you've been living under a rock over on ESPN right now. The Iron Bowl, Auburn with a six-point lead, about eight minutes left to go in the third quarter there. Coming up next here on ESPN2, Jay Ajayi and Boise State and Utah State. Huge game for the Broncos. They're trying to play for a spot in the New Year's Six. They're going to kick off on ESPN News in a couple minutes. Then when you guys finish up, they'll come over here to ESPN2. Sounds good, Chris. 16-play, 80-yard drive. That produced nothing, Brock. Trying to create a matchup here with the motion. You get into bunch, and you tell me at the moment of truth here, where are you throwing it? You're not. Where, 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 Nobody's where, open. Where are you throwing it here? And this is where Brad has got to develop and find a way, and you see this at the next level so much, 
And I get to witness it and watch it with Russell Wilson every single Sunday. Yeah, sometimes they're going to win and they're going to cover you up. And that's where you and I think into next season. And he's never going to be a runner. But finding a way to extend those plays a little bit and create after that initial play is going to be a pivotal part of his development and, and the system's development moving forward. Pitts bringing this thing in for what is going to be a very satisfying victory for them. Not just the stretch that they've had against Miami, a futility told you about winless in their last 10 road games. Last win was 1963. But knowing that they set forth for certain goals, and then at the end of the season when they had to have it, had to win those last two games, that they were able to do it. And it is a sales world in recruiting. You know that. And all you got to do is look at some of the talent. And you look at a Tyler Boyd. And you look at a Chad Wojtek. And you look at some of these younger pieces. You look at a Chris James out of Chicago, as you said earlier. And when you sell, so much easier to go on the road over the next month recruiting and saying, we are going to a bowl game. We're building upon last season. We ended an eight-game losing streak and went down to South Florida in the final week of the season. And you're going to get a chance to play with so many young guys that have a lot of talent moving this story forward. Third and one, and Bennett is able to muscle ahead and get a fresh set of downs that will close things out here. And on the flip side, you've got a top 15 recruiting class right now. For the University of Miami in, in a season ago a real top 10 recruiting class for Al Golden and this is such competitive turf of Florida State that hasn't lost a game in 28 in your own state the SEC that has come into South Florida and Arkansas and Brett Bielema that spends so much time in those SEC schools so much time recruiting the players out of here and to end on a three game losing streak and to fall back to six and six a real disappointment for the Hurricanes. Bennett again is just going to settle in for a two yard gain. I asked you this last week when they were wrapping things up against Virginia. I said, Brock, give me a sense of how you assess Miami. I started off tonight's broadcast by asking you. They're tricky to assess when you think about the talent they have, when you think about what they're capable of, but what would tonight mean in making that assessment? Now that you've seen this, what is it? Disappointing. I don't know how else to look at it. And, and you're sitting there, and the hard part is you were sitting there at 3-3 three and three at a real crossroads of the season and lost some primetime games out on the road. And then they really felt like they were galvanized, and they found that run game and that physical identity, and they ran – three in a row and ran all over Virginia Tech and North Carolina and did all those things and sat at six and three and then just emptied the tank against Florida State and played them to the wire like many have you lose that game and now you lose two more to follow yeah, against two opponents that in terms of Miami fans when they think about the talent they have and they think about what their expectations of the program is uh, hard to swallow in the attention to detail I mean the role that special teams played in this game tonight in kickoff returns from Tyler Boyd not once not twice but three times critical penalties putting I think still a lot on the on a freshman quarterback shoulders right now when the other phases of the game aren't as sharp as they need to be and Pitts able to drive it for five touchdowns in your building and do it 80 percent run when you know what's coming and you know what's going to be Boyd and you know it's going to be this run game and still a real challenge to stop it. Bennett will take us into the final minute here. Miami with a couple timeouts remaining. And Tyler Boyd, you mentioned him. He had five catches for 73 yards, and he really excelled on special teams and kick returns. He had a 190 yards on kick returns. Had that 53-yarder that set up a score for Pitt and really took some momentum away from Miami. And when you look at Pitt next year and now Paul Christ, if they can finish this out in the final 58 seconds, going to have more bowl practices, another bowl game. And they've got real people to build around next year. This kid in particular, it's one of the real difference makers. And James Conner in that backfield, it's really good. And you turn it around and, and you look at Miami's roster, who is your building block next year? Who is your centerpiece guy? It's probably Brad Kaya, your freshman quarterback. They really learned a lot. 
and gain some valuable, valuable experience. But who is your difference maker next year, Miami? You, know, you mentioned the bowl practices. T.J. Clemens, who's going to be a high NFL draft pick, the right tackle for Pitt. You know, he moved to the offensive line during bowl practice in 2012. They had that extra practices, an opportunity for him to grow and contribute in a different way. As Isaac Bennett's been contributing well. And James Conner dealing with that hip injury. But those are golden opportunities to grow and develop. Well, you know exactly what that story is. That's the Wisconsin story. That's development story. That's programs. And if you're going to take that next step and take it to the next level, you have got to develop your talent on hand. And that will be so much of what Paul Christ and the Panthers are going to have to do. And to do it now with winning these final two games, backs against the wall in a place that you have not won in a long, long time. And to come in here and, and really do it physically, no nonsense. We run it right at you, and we're going to finish you off. And the Panthers did just that. 227 rushing yards for Pitt. They didn't turn the ball over tonight. James Conner made history passing Tony Dorsett. Both these teams are now 6-6, six and six, but Pitt is celebrating that level ground. 35 to 23 disappointment for Miami. They lose their last three straight of this regular season. Much more college football to come your way and for that we send it to Chris Cotter in the studio. Thank you Tess.